What's up guys, this is your favorite fanfic YouTuber, the fanfic majesty, and welcome to another amazing video. You can follow me on Patreon for exclusive stories. 12LF Chapter 151 Huh? Are you teaching me how to do things? Snapped Sugar's palm slapped Sha Luo's knee firmly, she had closed her eyes confidently, with a successful smile on her lips. It's really useless, I don't think you should be cadres anymore, the only ones who can help the young master are me and my sister. You guys can't even deal with an intruder. I can already imagine the scene when the young master comes back and scolds you severely, ha 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 ha. Sugar turned around confidently, with a helpless smile on her lips, and then her expression began to gradually swell and become arrogant. He put his hands on his hips and laughed loudly at Torbal and others, even laughing until he fell back. You look very happy. Suddenly, a familiar voice came from Sugar's ear. Her smile stopped suddenly, and then she opened her eyes suddenly. She, who was smiling up at the sky just now, collided with Sha Luo's eyes that looked like a smile but not a smile. She was so frightened that her eyes and tongue popped out. From Torbol's perspective, Sugar just stood on Sha Luo's crotch and laughed, and the more he laughed, the more arrogant he was, and he raised his head directly. Those who didn't know thought she was going to help Sha Luo do something that couldn't be reported. You, you, you. How come you didn't turn into a toy? Sartang turned around in panic, but he couldn't stand upright. He tripped over his left foot and fell right in front of Sha Luo. Then he pointed at Sha Luo with a trembling finger, an expression of disbelief on his face. It was obvious that she had touched Sha Luo's body and used her fruit power completely, but for some reason the fruit power had no effect. This isn't science, it's not magic, it's not pirates. This scene completely overturned her long-term view of the world. The invincible devil fruit actually sometimes failed to work. Useless sugar, this person's hockey is really too strong. With your current level, there is no way you can turn this person into a toy. Torbal shook his head and explained to Sugar. Of course he understood the reason as he was well informed. Powerful hockey users can ignore some causal devil fruit abilities. It can at least offset some of the negative effects of devil fruit. If I guess correctly, you are the legendary, fifth emperor, who is in great power. Then he said to Sha Luo in a very affirmative tone, with a look of fear in his eyes. With the strength of sugar, it is absolutely impossible to control the combat power of the emperor of the sea. Those guys, are all monsters. No one can understand his desperate mood now. He can't fight and fight, and he can't run. The most terrible thing is that this is their base camp. If this place is abandoned, the young master's plans for so many years will be in vain. What should we do? At least we must keep the sugar. This is the key to the young master's control of Dressrosa. We must not let anything happen to her. Torbal has already planned how to circumvent Sha Luo, try to keep him away from sugar, and then try his best to stop Sha Luo. As long as sugar can escape smoothly, there is still a chance for everything, and the gang will dare to risk their lives for Doflamingo. Mr. Sha Luo, I wonder why you came to Dressrosa? You didn't even notify us, otherwise we wouldn't be so rude. Torbal waved his hand and said to Sha Luo in a funny and funny tone. With his ugly face, he really seemed to have the talent of a comedian. Huh, notification, are you teaching me how to do something? However, Sha Luo didn't give in to him, he lowered his body and caught the crawling sugar like a little chicken. The latter just froze and didn't dare to move. Judging from the look of her about to cry, she seemed to be very aggrieved. Tears filled the corners of her eyes but she didn't dare to flow out. No, no, no need to notify, Mr. Shadu is welcome to come anytime. Hearing this, Torbal waved his hands in panic. He was about to cry now. This Sha Luo is really difficult to take care of. Seeing that Sha Luo didn't like this, he changed his strategy again and said with a flattering smile. Mr. Sha Luo, what happened before was all a misunderstanding. We thought someone was going to invade Dressrosa, so we sent people to stop it. If we had known that it was you coming here, we would have given you a grand welcome. In order to express our apology, our Don Quixote family is willing to pay one billion belly as compensation to Mr. Sha Luo. Torbal said in a low voice, with an unmistakable look of flattery. Being able to give out one billion belly as compensation upon meeting can be regarded as generous. He is able to bend and stretch, which is a talent. However, Sha Luo believed in strength and was a flexible person. He had already been such a person in his previous life. You are so weird. I beat one of your people, but you still want to give me money. Sha Luo gave him a strange look. This is all as it should be. We were the first to offend Mr. Sha Luo because we were careless. One billion belly is just a small gift and not respectful. Torbal quickly apologized, thinking that his operation calmed down Sha Luo's anger, and then quickly asked. Is Mr. Sha Luo here for fun? Or is it to do something? I have a good reputation here. As long as Mr. Sha Luo asks, I can help you with anything. He patted his chest and looked like he was wrapping it around me. As long as the plague god Sha Luo can be calmed down, it is worth paying a little price. Oh, then you are very capable. Sha Luo looked at him with playful eyes and said in a sinister tone. I don't take it seriously, but I have a certain status on this island. After all, we, Shaosheng, are the kings here. 
Torbal mistook Sha Luo's words as a compliment and said embarrassedly. That's easy to handle. In that case, I'll just tell you that I want this little sister. Sha Luo suddenly showed a bright smile, holding up the sugar in her hand. Said happily. Hey, E.H., sugar and Torbal shouted in surprise at the same time. I thought I could escape the clutches of the devil, but I didn't expect that the other party's target was actually me. Sugar was already crying at this time, and kept mumbling. I don't want it, Torbal, please save me. He is a child-eating demon, he will eat me. Tears kept sliding down his cheeks, and under the extreme fear, Sugar even had snot coming out of his nose. His feet were constantly moving in the air in a running posture, but he could not break away from Sha Luo's big hand no matter what. The panicked Sugar could only choose to reach out to Torbal for help. Now she is still immersed in the fear of Sha Luo's delicious child before. Ah, uh, Mr. Sha Luo, aren't you still angry with Sugar? Sugar is just a child. Please forgive her for being rude. I will prepare a generous gift for you to make up for Sugar's rude behavior just now. Torbal was stunned and said, waving his hands and feet wildly. Yes, yes, I'm just a child, please let me go, Sugar cried and nodded repeatedly. At this point she admitted that she was a child, that's not what I just heard you say. Sha Luo deliberately turned her face to the side of Sugar, and then exposed her white teeth. This scared Granu to the point of fainting. Cheer up, Sugar, Torbal shouted anxiously, fearing that Sugar would faint. Fortunately, Granu withstood the pressure and was still awake. Call. Torbal breathed a sigh of relief. Finally. Sugar was not completely unconscious, otherwise the city would be in chaos. I won't play with you anymore, I will definitely take the sugar away, as for you. They are the gift that I plan to return to Doflamingo. Sha Luo stopped teasing Sugar, then he turned to look at Torbal, raising his right hand slightly and pointing at him, with a trace of lightning wrapped around his fingertips. Thundergun, call out. A handful of bullets composed of thunder and lightning detached from Sha Luo's fingertips and hit the target accurately. Ah, Torbal screamed loudly after being hit. The lightning attack seemed to pass through his body and only his skeleton was visible. Within two seconds, he collapsed covered in black smoke. You can clearly smell the smell of burnt meat in the air. Okay, it's time for us to leave. Sha Luo carried the sugar and slowly walked towards the place where Torbal fell to the ground. No, don't eat me, I know I was wrong, I will never use my powers indiscriminately again. Sugar cried and begged. Sha Luo ignored her and kept the little girl in fear to save her life. Put him in a lot of trouble. Why, do you do this? Ha. Huh? Ha, huh, is it because one billion baileys is too few? Torbal grabbed Sha Luo's shoes and spoke with difficulty. Oh, you didn't faint, you're quite durable, Sha Luo glanced at him in surprise. Have you underestimated these cadres? How come one after another someone can withstand his attacks? A blast of thunder failed to stun these guys. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. It seems that these cadre level guys are not all idiots, at least they are somewhat capable in terms of physical strength. Why, since you asked the question, I will tell you mercifully. Do you still remember the three people your family sent two days ago? Doflamingo specially gave me a big gift, and I am here to return the gift to him this time. Sha Luo looked at the confused Torbal on the ground, with a bright smile on his face, and said slowly. It looks very much like those vicious squinting characters in anime. This smile looked like a devil in Torbal's eyes. Wah! What, you are the one who took Gaisa and Monet away? Torbal suddenly understood and said with a frightened expression. He finally understood why Sha Luo targeted his family. I see, after saying that, Torbal fell down again, this time he really lost consciousness. It turned out that I was holding on for a breath, I thought I was getting weaker. Sha Luo directly used her ability to make Torbal float up, and brought the sugar out of the ground. Back to the bullfighting arena. Sha Luo threw Torbal in the center, and then directly kicked away all the other swordfighters on the arena stage. Then he whistled to call Xiao Yin over, and threw the sugar to Xiao Yin's care. Now sugar finally breathed a sigh of relief. It was better to be with this powerful dragon-shaped creature than with Sha Luo. Then, with his palms pressed to the ground, the entire island began to shake. Zero. What happened? Rebecca, who returned to the Sea of Flowers, noticed something unusual. The island seemed to be experiencing an earthquake or a volcanic eruption, just like the huge noise before. Rebecca speculated that this must be done by some mysterious man. Rebecca, let's go back and take a look, it must have been done by the man you just mentioned. That man, maybe we overthrew him the key to Doflamingo's evil reign. The one-legged toy soldier said with great certainty. Then he took the lead and ran in the direction of the bullfighting arena, Rebecca Ball followed. The shaking of the island is getting louder and louder. One person and one toy can clearly feel that the surrounding environment is changing. I seem to be drifting further and further away from the sky. If you zoom out, you can clearly see that the entire Dressrosa has slowly floated up from the sea. Sha Luo sat at the highest point of the arena and nodded with great satisfaction. You want to send him away for one billion belly? This is impossible, he wants them all. If we pack this place away, all the money Doflamingo has been saving will be gone. It's all his, 
he doesn't even think about leaving Sha Luo to him. Among them, the toy soldiers were the most shocked. Three top cadres and five family cadres were all here. The entire island is now completely separated from the sea and begins to move slowly towards Long Yu Island. Of course, that includes you, you belong to me too. Rebecca felt her eyes flash, the sword in her hand was knocked out, and she didn't know how she got into the other person's arms. She couldn't imagine what would happen to this kingdom if someone here had an accident. A true toy is just like a toy that can be manipulated by others. It's better to wait until we return to Long Yu Island and let Golden Lion's old subordinates manage these guys. Sorry, the owner of this island probably has to change his last name. Everything here will belong to me. The guy the first dreamed of hitting would be like a real guy in the hands of others. Stand up. This is where all the civilian lives of Dress Rose alive. Sha Luo was in front of her in an instant, then hugged her waist and quickly returned to her seat. As soon as the toy soldiers and Rebecca came in, they saw eight people who were strung up in the center of the arena and didn't know whether they were alive or dead. Sha Luo just crossed her legs, lay on her seat and closed her eyes to relax, as if she was sitting on her own throne. A figure of one person and one toy appeared at the gate of the bullfighting arena. There are many soldiers of the Don Quixote family under this island, but Sha Luo has no intention of dealing with the gangsters. After all, it is free labor, and it is of some use as farm tools. Not a moment. What did you do? Why did this island fly? As soon as she stopped, Rebecca asked Sha Luo loudly. She drew her sword and stood ready for Sha Luo. He felt that two people were moving quickly towards this side, so there was no need for him to bother looking for them. Chapter 152 The Unknown Little Pirate Sha Luo When, such a fast speed, Rebecca noticed her position and said in surprise. Only now did she truly understand how big the gap was between herself and the Emperor of the Sea. He was caught by the other party without any power. Rebecca. Seeing this, the toy soldier shouted anxiously, picked up his gun and rushed towards Sha Luo. Earth coiling. When Sha Luo raised his hand, the ground suddenly rose up and surrounded the toy soldiers. The rock locked the toy soldier tightly and turned into a statue, leaving only one head exposed. What? What's going on? The rocks are moving on their own, is Devil Fruit a user with abilities? The toy soldier struggled hard, but no matter how hard he struggled, he couldn't break free from the shackles of the rock. Mr. Soldier. Rebecca shouted nervously. She wanted to break free from Sha Luo's big hand and push his chest hard, but it was like pushing a big mountain, unable to shake it at all. Let me go. Seeing that she couldn't get away, Rebecca shouted loudly to Sha Luo. Don't move, you don't want anything to happen to that toy soldier. Sha Luo pinched Rebecca's fat free belly and said with a wicked smile on her face. This can be regarded as a small revenge for not listening to yourself, who told her to leave the arena without listening to her own advice. You, Rebecca looked at Sha Luo with angry eyes, with Sha Luo's threat, she did not dare to resist too violently. After all, the life of the soldier who raised him is now in Sha Luo's hands. Very good, that's right. Sha Luo nodded with satisfaction. Rebecca was held in 383's arms by Sha Luo like a doll and allowed to be manipulated. She could only grit her teeth and endure it silently, unable to make any resistance. What on earth do you want to do and where will this island float to? Rebecca slapped off Sha Luo's hand that was pinching her face, looked at him fiercely, and asked. Didn't I just say that I want you in this island? As for where it will flow to? That is of course my territory. Sha Luo was not angry and pinched the girl's delicate cheek again. The young girl's cheeks are so delicate, that he couldn't put it down while playing with it, especially this kind of girl who is still in her teens. Rebecca is now two years younger than Vivi, but her figure is already on par with Vivi's. Sure enough, the human genes in the pirate world are very strong, especially among women, and few are equal. Especially these princesses, each of them showed a proud figure in their teenage years. Especially Rebecca, her body is very flexible and even after practicing sword skills all year round. Are you kidding? I, I, a woman like me, do you need to do this for me, too? Sha Luo's direct words directly made Rebecca blush. I thought Sha Luo was joking before, but I didn't expect that he was serious. Besides, aren't you afraid of Doflamingo's revenge on you? He's not like these. The cadre is so simple, and he also cooperates with a very powerful pirate. Although you are very powerful, it is impossible to compete with monsters of that level. Hearing this, Sha Luo looked at her in surprise, doesn't she know her identity? Aren't you who I am? You, you should be a very powerful pirate, although I don't know your specific identity, your name sounds familiar. This time, it was Rebecca who had a weird expression. Does who Sha Luo have anything to do with me? Not everyone in the world knows me. Judging from the previous performance of the cadres of the Don Quixote family, Sha Luo seems to be some kind of big shot pirate. But none of this has anything to do with me, so I haven't paid attention to it. Sha Luo understood what Rebecca meant at a glance. The case has been solved, but he is not famous enough. Even in places like Drake Rosa, there are still people who have never heard of his name. Who are you, the big pirate who has been in the limelight recently, Golden Lion 2, Sha Luo? I have read your reports. With your strength, there is really no need to be afraid, 
Doflamingo and the big pirate he cooperated with, now people put you together with the four emperors of the sea, and you are called the fifth emperor of the sky and sea. The bound Choi soldier spoke at this time, he paid more attention to the news on the sea than Rebecca, so he naturally knew Sha Luo's identity. What? This guy can actually be ranked with those sea overlords. Rebecca looked at Sha Luo in shock, she didn't know Sha Luo, but she knew those existences that the sea called monsters. I didn't expect that this ordinary, well, guy who looks a bit handsome, but has thin skin and tender flesh, could actually be a strong man of that level. Judging from Sha Luo's normal muscles, they're indeed just thin skin and tender meat. There are too many muscular men in the pirate world, and there are countless big muscular men. I didn't expect that someone would know a little unknown pirate like me, it's really strange. Sha Luo shook his head and laughed at himself. It was obvious that he was really talking about how Rebecca didn't recognize him just now. Rebecca puffed up her cheeks and understood what he meant, didn't he mean that he had no knowledge or vision? Humph. She shook her head, leaving only the back of her head facing Sha Luo. Your Excellency Sha Luo really loves to joke, if a strong man like you can be regarded as an unknown little pirate, then who else can be called a big pirate? The toy soldier spoke calmly, now his mood has calmed down, and he sees that Sha Luo has no intention of hurting Rebecca. And it seems like she likes Rebecca, the toy soldier felt a little weird, as if the cabbage he had raised for many years had been eaten by a pig. That's right, any woman from any family will feel this way if she is suddenly treated like this by a bad boy. Your Excellency Sha Luo, may I ask what the future of this kingdom will be like? After the toy soldier asked, Rebecca secretly glanced at Sha Luo from the corner of her eye, as if she was looking forward to his answer. The fight between Sha Luo and Doflamingo has nothing to do with her, but she cares about the future fate of this kingdom. What will happen? Sha Luo looked down and thought. The toy soldier became uneasy, feeling as if he had just escaped from the tiger's mouth and entered the wolf's den. And Sha Luo is not just a wolf's den, he is much more dangerous than the previous, tiger's mouth. In this way, both of them looked at Sha Luo nervously. Okay. I won't tease you anymore. Sha Luo suddenly smiled and casually untied the toy soldiers. Teasing us. Both of them were suddenly confused. What did Sha Luo mean by this? I made an agreement with the princess of this country. I will help her get the kingdom back. She will be mine from now on. Sha Luo told Violet his agreement. Princess? The toy soldier got up from the ground and repeated Sha Luo's words in surprise. Scarlet? No, this is his wife, and she is dead. It is impossible to make such an agreement with Sha Luo. Rebecca? It's impossible. She obviously doesn't know him. There is only one answer left, and that is Scarlet's sister, Violet. She should now be coerced into working for the Don Quixote family. How to contact Sha Luo and reach cooperation with him is very confusing. But this also gave him good news. Sha Luo will not do anything to the kingdom, on the contrary, it can restore Dressrosa to its previous appearance. So that's it, that's great. The toy soldier breathed a sigh of relief, and there was a sense of relief on the toy's expression. Thank you very much, Mr. Sha Luo, for your help to this country. He bowed respectfully to Sha Luo and solemnly thanked him. I didn't expect you to come to help this country. Rebecca took a new look at Sha Luo, and her attitude became much better. Don't forget about the things you did to yourself before writing down. You won't resist now? Sha Luo teased playfully and pinched her little face with her hand. Mr. Sha Luo, if you want to pinch it, just pinch it, compare it with your help, I can't do anything, if this can make you happy. Rebecca shook her head, then I won't be polite. Seeing this, Sha Luo took it a step further and leaned her face directly against Rebecca. Mr. Sha Luo, Rebecca suddenly turned red and was too shy to look directly into his eyes. The toy soldier below felt uncomfortable, looking at his baby girl. The children were stuck together by some bad boy. Toy soldier over there, could you please find the original king here, Raikota? If we want to stabilize the civilians here, we need the help of King Riku III. Sha Luo suddenly spoke to the toy soldier. King Riku, I understand. The toy soldier nodded, then left the bullfighting arena and went out to look for King Riku. Only Sha Luo and Rebecca are left here. Rebecca looked a little nervous and couldn't let go. Sha Luo's behavior just now made her feel very shy. Having the toy soldiers go looking for King Riku was purely because he was such a light bulb. It disturbed my time with the beautiful girl. Moreover, it is more troublesome to deal with the problem of civilians in Dressrosa. You can't kill them all or become a tyrant. That would be too troublesome. Sha Luo has no intention of doing those things. The best way is to let the Riku family rule the kingdom again. I just need to collect money silently behind the scenes. Anyway. Violet and Rebecca are in his hands, and he is not afraid of Riku. The king ran away. Mr. Sha Luo, is what you said before true? Rebecca asked Sha Luo with a blushing face. What's up? That's it. Dot you came here for me or something, Rebecca said softly, and immediately lowered her head after speaking. Which one? If you think I'm real, then this is real. Sha Luo pretended to be serious and kicked the ball back to Rebecca. But, in that case, what will Aunt Violet do? Will it be inappropriate for Aunt Violet and I to do this? Suddenly, she became excited again and shouted anxiously. Oh, 
That means you want this to be true? Sha Luo smiled and touched her head, and the latter lowered her head with a blush. Haha, ha, as long as I think about it, no one will say anything and no one dares to say anything. Sha Luo said casually, hockey. Just be your princess and I will help you resolve Doflamingo's situation. Thank you. Rebecca whispered her thanks, then both of them were silent. Sha Luo enjoys the girl's soft and delicate body, while Rebecca presses. Release your power and enjoy a moment of peace, a long time. The toy soldier also found King Liku and brought him to Sha Luo. After understanding the situation, he immediately thanked Sha Luo. Then came the discussion about Dressrosa. Great purge. King Riku took over his original army, and Dressrosa's army also wept with joy. Warmly welcome King Riku's return. The army began to purge the former members of the Don Quixote family, and all of them were arrested. However, at Sha Luo's request, these people were temporarily detained. When Long Yu Island is transferred to Sha Luo's territory, this is a good motivation. In the factory of the Don Quixote family, King Riku also brought out the princess of the little human clan Dante to kingdom. Surely, Sha Luo is very interested in this little human princess. Not only because of the figure-like body of the other party, but more importantly because of her ability to heal the fruit. Of course, Sha Luo didn't have that idea. It would be too crazy to do something like that to a figure, but Sha Luo is not that crazy. Sha Luo also returned Princess Suilele to the Dongtada Kingdom. This immediately made the little humans burst into tears of gratitude. They are all representatives of innocence and innocence. They say they don't believe others, but in fact they believe what others say. It's no wonder that Usopp, the king of liars, enjoys success here. Of course, Sha Luo, the green bit located north of Dressrosa, didn't miss it either. While making Dressrosa levitate, he took the grim bit away with him. Although the little human race is very small, it is extremely fast and its power is several times higher than that of humans. It is a good combat unit. Greenbit has a wild forest. The plants here are very huge, vines, trees, mushrooms, all plants are very huge. Except for the Dantata Kingdom, it is an uninhabited island. Except for their family, no humans live here, it is a quite primitive forest. There is a bridge from Dressrosa to Greenbit, but due to the appearance of fighting fish, people no longer dared to cross this bridge. All the ships that came here were attacked by fighting fish. If you are still in the sea below, you can see a lot of shipwrecks accumulated on the coast of Greenbit. Now that the threat of fighting fish is gone, civilians can also go to Green Turtle B through the bridge. At the same time, King Riku also announced Doflamingo's conspiracy many years ago and the current situation. In addition, Sha Luo asked Sanduong to restore the civilians who had been turned into toys to their original state, and they had the testimony of these civilians. Everyone believed what King Riku said and denounced Doflamingo for what he did. The villains of the Dantata Kingdom also formed an alliance with the King Liku clan, and officially launched the friendly exchanges between Dressrosa and the villains. Dressrosa has become a paradise where humans and little humans live together in peace. The former, land of toys of love and passion, has also been changed into a land of fairies of love and passion. Dressrosa officially broke away from the world government's participating countries and became a subsidiary force of Sha Luo. It is much better to have the protection of such a sea emperor than those sea cars that do nothing. There is no need to pay that huge heavenly gold for celestial dragons. It is enough to hand over a percentage of the profit to Sha Luo. Chapter 153 Rebecca wants to join, Summit War begins. Long Yu Island, I didn't expect you to actually. Violet covered her mouth and said in surprise, she wants Sha Luo to help her father regain the throne, restore Dressrosa to its original order, and break Doflamingo's reign of terror. Not only did he comply with her request, he also moved Dressrosa back. He also brought back all the adjacent green bits. Judging from the respectful and adoring eyes of the little humans, Sha Luo seems to have subdued the little humans. Darling, BABY5 was much more direct and rushed forward to hug Sha Luo. The latter also took advantage of the situation and took Baby5 for two turns before stopping. Darling, are you okay? Those guys didn't hurt you. Baby5 looked at Sha Luo with a worried look. His hands kept groping Sha Luo's body, seemingly looking for any injuries on Sha Luo. But judging from her rosy cheeks and that idiotic smile, the purpose. Not pure. But is Sha Luo the kind of person who doesn't fight back when someone takes advantage of her? Reciprocity is reciprocal. He also made the same move towards BABY5. Take back all the lost advantages, this is a win win situation. Nami covered her forehead to avoid looking at the weird actions of the two people who looked so good together. Baby Five's face was red, and she lay panting in Sha Luo's arms, her eyes full of love. Okay, okay, please stop for a moment, there are so many people watching. Nami walked over and said helplessly. He directly pulled Baby Five out of Sha Luo's arms. Rebecca, who was following behind Sha Luo, was blushing and covering her little eyes, but it could indeed be seen from her exposed fingers that she was peeking. Tisk, this vicious woman actually disturbed my reunion with darling. Baby Five whispered about Nami behind her back, but she didn't dare to curse too blatantly. Because she already understands that there are many women in Sha Luo on this ship, and Nami has a high status in Sha Luo's heart. 
Sha Luo, why don't you explain to me what's going on? 24 inches. Nami looked at the group of people behind Sha Luo and their families with strange eyes. 81st there was Cyrus who transformed from a toy soldier back into a human being, King Riku III, and then Rebecca. Rebecca had already recognized her father Cyrus, and then she changed out of her armor that increased her defense and put on a beige dress. Now she appears here as Princess Dressrosa. That is to say, I have packed up all the property of Doflamingo and brought Dressrosa into my territory. Sha Luo said casually with a calm expression. What's going on with the little humans over there? And that girl with pink hair, you kidnapped another one, right? Could it be that she's also a princess? Nami then pointed at the small human standing with King Riku beside them. Then he pointed at Rebecca and asked expressionlessly. Nami, you know me. Sha Luo nodded and said proudly. The fifth one. Nami shook his head helplessly. Captain Sha Luo, thank you very much. Violet rushed over at this moment, with some tears left in the corners of her eyes. She just asked her father and finally got a complete story from him. The change of identity is also very fast. She has officially called Sha Luo the captain, which also shows that she has officially chosen to join Sha Luo's group. I have fulfilled your request. In other words, you are mine from now on, right? Sha Luo pinched her chin and slowly raised it, speaking affectionately. Um. Violet nodded and responded shyly. Sha Luo came forward and kissed Violet's lips directly. Yeah, Violet closed her eyes and responded awkwardly. Rebecca peeped silently from behind, Cyrus had turned his head, and only Wan and Wuyi looked at the two of them happily. It also seems very good for Violet to be with Sha Luo, at least the kingdom is secure. You're talking about wanting to get someone, and now you're like this with Aunt Violet. Do you want them all? What a greedy man, but my father and grandfather will definitely not agree to this. Rebecca murmured softly, her face turning red as she spoke. Rebecca, what were you talking about just now? Cyrus asked doubtfully, he seemed to have heard Rebecca mumbling something just now. No, no, Rebecca quickly waved her hand and denied it, a long time. The two of them slowly separated, Nami sighed twice. Reju, please deal with the soldiers of the Don Quixote family in Dressrosa. Well, I understand. Reju nodded. By the way, as well as those cadres, send them all to Gaisa's place to collect blood samples and preserve them. They can use them when Gaisa and the others make Paramisha fruit. By the way, is the person with the ability to turn around the fruit that I captured before still alive? After the blood samples are taken, he will be locked up with these guys. This is the big gift I plan to give to Doflamingo. Sha Luo suddenly remembered that the buffalo had been handed over to Reju and the others after being thrown back, and they still didn't know whether it was alive or dead. It's still alive, and it's still with father and his friends. Now they're focusing on studying what you call, green blood, it's the time when they need a lot of Paramisha demon fruit power blood. That's just right, these guys are very big, as long as they don't die and then draw, they should be able to study for a long time. I see. Reju responded, then turn around to deal with it, everyone also said goodbye. King Riku and the others were very happy to come here and see Violet, however, Leo from the little human race cried and said that he wanted to follow Sha Luo. However, Sha Luo felt that it was a bit weird to have a male mini-human next to her all the time, so she solemnly told Leo that he was the key to the friendship between the mini-human and the Dressrosa human. The two races need to develop together to make Dressrosa more prosperous. Leo also shed excited tears and agreed at once, without any doubt that Sha Luo had other meanings. Instead, it was because he felt Sha Luo's trust in him that he gave him such an arduous task. Sha Luo wiped the soybeans on her forehead and couldn't help but sigh, the little humans are really simple. Rebecca on the other side suddenly made a shocking decision when leaving. She decided to join Sha Luo's pirate group, why, isn't it good to be in Dressrosa? Cyrus asked in confusion. In his opinion, there is nothing better than being able to reunite as a family and live happily together. But at this moment, Rebecca actually wanted to leave home and go out on adventure, because I wanted to become stronger. Rebecca said with firm eyes, becoming stronger, now that Dressrosa is at peace and no one is intruding here anymore, why should we insist on becoming stronger? Cyrus continued to ask, because I don't want to be a princess who doesn't have to think about anything, I also want. Do your part for the country, I also want to protect my country. Mr. Sha Luo is very strong, much stronger than my father, if I learn from Mr. Sha Luo, I will definitely have the power to protect the country. Rebecca's eyes were determined and she made up her mind. Cyrus was instantly shocked. His daughter compared her with other men and actually said that she was not as good as others. Cyrus was crying silently in his heart. D. Cyrus wanted to say something else, but was interrupted by King Liku. Cyrus. Look at this boy's eyes. Cyrus looked over, and Rebecca's firm gaze made him waver. This look really looks like her mother. I see. Cyrus nodded with a serious expression, and then said solemnly to Sha Luo. Your Excellency Sha Luo, could you please help take care of this child? I don't care. I'm very welcome for Rebecca to join. Sha Luo shrugged and said casually. That's great, thank you very much. Both Cyrus and King Liku bowed to Sha Luo to express their gratitude. Hey, another one was caught. 
Only Nami shook his head helplessly and sighed. Hello, Rebecca, my name is Kaya, and we will be companions from now on. Kaya stepped forward, grabbed Rebecca's little hand with a gentle expression and introduced herself. Hello Kaya, I'm Rebecca. Looking at the gentle, petite and cute Kaya, Rebecca felt like she was melting and couldn't help but respond. Kaya is three years older than Rebecca, but in appearance, Rebecca is more like a sister. The bonus of the princess is a little higher than that of the weak eldest lady, but the figure is not of the same level. Vivi has a strong say in this regard. The two younger princesses both have very hot figures. Vivi and Perona rushed up to say hello, as well as Shirahoshi. The four little ones turned into five little ones, and the oldest one, Perona, blended perfectly into them. Cyrus and King Liku were lamenting that Sha Luo actually abducted the mermaid princess. But it also proved in disguise that Sha Luo is a person worth trusting, even Mermaid Island. The king is better than the princess entrusted to Sha Luo. Seeing Vivi and Rebecca laughing and talking, Sha Luo suddenly had an idea, but it was not yet in the implementation stage. In this way, Rebecca officially joined Sha Luo's group. A few more days passed like this. Rebecca also fully integrated into Sha Luo's group. During this period, Violet and Baby Five were also captured by Sha Luo as a matter of course. Baby Five also gave up after being captured by Sha Luo. He no longer readily accepted other people's requests, but only accepted requests from Sha Luo alone. If it were someone else they didn't know, BABY5 would have a gun pointed at their head and be shot first. Today is a special day. Because the summit war is coming. Sha Luo packed up the Doflamingo cadres early. Sha Luo, you have to be careful. This battle is not easy. Although I don't know what you have planned, your life is tenth. If you encounter any wrong situation, you must first protect your life. Nami gave instructions with a solemn look and a calm tone. She stretched out her hand to straighten Sha Luo's collar and then lightly tapped his cheek. Don't worry, don't you know my strength yet? Wait for me to come back with peace of mind. Sha Luo rubbed her little head and said with a gentle look on her face. I'm leaving now, I'll leave this place to you, 997, well, don't worry, leave it to us. Have a pleasant journey, Mr. Sha Luo. Shirahoshi waved his hand worriedly and said goodbye to Sha Luo. Sha Luo shook her hand, then sat on the back of Tian Weilong, taking Don Quixote with her. The cadres of the family took off immediately, naval headquarters. Marine Ford. All marines are on alert. On the execution platform, Ace was kneeling there silently. Beside him are Sengoku, known as, the resourceful general, and, Hiro, Garp. Directly under the execution platform are the three most powerful members of the naval headquarters, Admiral, Aokiji, Akainu, and Hirazaru. Below stood eight giant giant vice admirals, as well as countless marine soldiers. Further ahead, guarding the forefront of the army seen at the port, were the five great pirates, the seven warlords of the sea, who held the key to the battle. It makes sense that there are only five people in Shichibukai. Huh, luckily I'm not late. This is really an excellent place to watch the battle. Sha Luo and Xiao Yin were floating at an altitude of 10,000 meters above the naval headquarters. From below, you can only see one. A small black dot. Sha Luo, who inherited Xiao Yan's eyes, could clearly see everyone below, including their faces. It's so big, it's really completely different from what's shown in the comics. This is the real battlefield. Sha Luo looked down with burning eyes. This scene made him feel an inexplicable feeling. That was his long repressed passion. Gathered below are countless heroes from Marine, with the highest level of combat power. I really want to have a happy battle. The corners of Sha Luo's mouth slowly opened. From the moment he saw Marshal Sengoku to the Shichibukai at the front, his mouth almost reached the base of his ears. Like a devilish smile, as if feeling Sha Luo's mood, Xiao Yin's mouth and nose spurted out red dragon energy and thunderlight as he gasped, his eyes sharpened, and he looked eager to try. Appearance. At this time, evil eyes suddenly looked up at the sky, looking straight in the direction of Sha Luo. Oh, have you noticed? As expected of Hawkeye, his eyes are really sharp. Even though they were so far away, even Sengoku and Garp didn't notice that the swordsman's perception was so sensitive. Say, Sha Luo raised her eyebrows and said with interest, Eagle Eye is worthy of his nickname, his eyes are as sharp as an eagle. These eyes can not only discern the weaknesses and abilities of others, but also see through the essence of things. Coupled with his keen senses, he can detect and see anyone who is secretly watching him. Mahawk below frowned and looked straight at Sha Luo in the sky for a long time before slowly lowering his head. What's wrong? Hawkeye, your expression seems a little strange. Doflamingo stuck out his tongue, with a look on his face. Chapter 154 The Opening Ceremony of the War Don't mind your own business. Mahawk said coldly. Just now he noticed someone's gaze, and when he looked in the direction, he saw that it was above the sky. At such a height, even he could only see a rough outline, it seemed like a bird creature? No, the silhouette seen at this distance is not just a bird, but at least a super huge bird. And there is a very small figure on it. A mere bird would not have made him so alert. It must be the person above. Who is he? Appearing on this battlefield at this time. It's so cold, after all, we are all in the same group, right? 
Ha 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 ha. Doflamingo spread his hands and laughed loudly. I'm not on the same side as you. I'm just here to fulfill my promise to Marine. Don't bother me, or I'll kill you before the war starts. Mahawk crossed his arms and said coldly, E.H., it's really inhumane, scary, scary. Doflamingo stopped asking for trouble, waved his hand and said nothing, he looks very high-spirited now. As proud as he is now, he will be miserable later. Sha Luo will not let him be so arrogant. Execution platform. Everything is ready, yes. Bring the phone bug here. Sengoku nodded and took the phone bug from the sea soldier. There is something I want to convey to you in advance. Sengoku's voice reached the ears of all marines present through the phone. The video phone bugs on various islands also relayed the live broadcast at the same time. The news reporter swallowed their saliva and watched the scenes in the video phone bugs closely. The marines also turned around and looked at Sengoku on the execution platform. Subsequently, Sengoku began to expose Ace's life experience. It's nothing more than Sengoku asking Ace's father, Ace said it was Whitebeard, Sengoku retorted and revealed the truth that his father was the legendary pirate king Gold D. Roger. Although she had already watched it once, Sha Luo still watched it live again. I think Jingjing is delicious. However, Marine Below and the civilians watching the live broadcast around the world were not calm. Everyone shed cold sweat and looked shocked. Different people have different reactions. Some applauded, some gloated, and some watched the show. As Sengoku finished his speech, Marine's side erupted in unprecedented cheers. Marshal Sengoku. Report. The gate of justice opened automatically without receiving any instructions, the power room cannot be contacted either. At this time, a sailor ran behind the execution platform and shouted loudly. What? Sengoku turned around in shock, but now I can no longer care about that side, the war will start soon. Send someone to check the situation in the power room immediately, Sengoku ordered immediately. Yes. The marine turned around and started running immediately. Another moment passed. The marine soldiers stood ready and stared at the sea, but it was calm and there was no trace of any ship. Only Sha Luo, who is high in the sky, can see the whole picture clearly. Ha ha ha. Here we come. In Sha Luo's field of vision, a huge fleet is slowly moving towards the naval headquarters, and it will appear in Marine's field of vision soon. Sengoku's originally calm face shed two drops of sweat. Because it's so abnormal, Whitebeard hasn't even appeared after so long. Three admirals sat down calmly. Among the three, Aokiji is the one who stands alone. The other two are all on their own feet, and he is the most ordinary without any action. And he was looking away with a sullen face. No wonder he would defect from Marine later, probably because he was ostracized by the other two. Sha Luo thought in a very funny way, it's so quiet. Pirate Empress Boa Hancock said in a calm tone, it's so unnatural. Doflamingo grinned widely and licked his lips with his tongue in reply. He lives up to his nickname of High Gang, and his behavior and behavior reveal the smell of a gangster. At this time, thick fog began to appear in the sea far away from the naval headquarters. Here comes. Marine on the observation deck saw the ship through the thick fog and immediately sounded the alarm. Everyone, get ready for battle. The battleships and the cannon holes on the bay all began to adjust to the position where the ship's shadow appeared. It suddenly appeared. Where did it appear from? Sengoku looked shocked, surprised by the appearance of these ships. As we all know, the sea is flat, but it was only after getting so close that we found out, what method did these people under Whitebeard use to avoid marine sight? The marines in the bay also let out several shouts of surprise. There's nothing to panic about, it's really hopeless. Crane Vice Admiral, standing under the execution platform, said contemptuously. This is the worst marine she has ever seen. Of course, it refers to ordinary sailors. So there was a hint of disgust in his tone. Boom, boom, boom. At this time, several bubbles appeared and exploded in the calm waters of the bay. Three admirals reacted immediately and looked in the direction of the water. Then a bigger bubble emerged, then exploded, causing a ripple in the otherwise flat water. Is it possible? Sengoku whispered with a few drops of sweat dripping from his forehead. Could he appear from an unexpected place? Garp asked in a low voice to Vice Admiral, the crane beside him. Did you set up the wrong formation? Crane Vice Admiral turned his head and gritted his teeth and said, with unconcealable embarrassment on his face. She and Sengoku were the two responsible for deploying the defense line, but they didn't expect such a big loophole to be left. The enemy actually did not appear from the front, but lurked in the sea from the beginning to break through the peripheral defenses and reach the center. Another huge bubble exploded from the water, and then a huge ship rushed out of it. The ship flying in midair was attracted by gravity and slammed down hard, and water splashed on the faces of the marine soldiers in front of them who were showing shocked expressions. Two ships, three ships, four ships. Four large ships appeared inside the bend. But Sha Luo knew that there was another one hidden underneath. Under everyone's gaze, Whitebeard slowly walked onto the bow of the Moby Dick. Long time no see, Sengoku. My dear son, are you okay? Gee you la 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 la. Whitebeard greeted Sengoku first, showing his signature laugh. The ordinary soldiers just looked at Whitebeard standing there and lost the courage to resist him. Then he inserted the knife behind his back, 
squatted down into a horse stance, made fists with both hands to make a hugging gesture, and then punched the air on both sides. Click click click. The space was cracked by him, and the vibrating power continuously affected the water area. The water on both sides of the bay continued to rise under the power of sea earthquakes, and soon exceeded the height of naval headquarters. That's it. The opening of Summit War has officially begun. TCH, he's so good that he's done pretending. Sha Luo, who was high up in the sky, curled her lips and complained. The huge waves that had just risen on both sides of the bay suddenly subsided again. Then came the cordial conversation between Whitebeard and Ace. Marco said, on this sea, everyone knows what will happen if we attack our companions. The pirates burst into loud shouts, and their momentum continued to rise. You really have recruited a group of incredible guys. Why are you talking about this now? It's so uncomfortable. Three Admiral also bubbled up here at the right time, looking coldly at the pirates below. It's so exciting. Doflamingo's flexible little tongue kept licking his lips and smiled sadly. Then he turned to look at Hawkeye on the side without giving up and asked, Are you going to sit back and watch again? You are here to kill time anyway. The eagle eyes looked straight ahead, as if he didn't hear Doflamingo's words, and carried out his coldness to the end. It's up to you, haha. Seeing this, he turned his head back. However, Hancock, who was next to Hawkeye, glanced at Doflamingo with a look of disgust on his face. There are smelly men everywhere, I really can't stand it, but, he is also a man, but that adult is specially made. Hancock said to himself silently in his heart, Bay Center. Those guys suddenly became quiet, I'm probably waiting for Whitebeard's order. The two seamen beside Hina said nervously. Whitebeard and his team were clearly surrounded, but they were very calm, with a smile on their faces. At the same time, water levels in the bay are rising, from Sha Luo's perspective. On both sides of the naval headquarters, two huge waves of tsunamis rushed towards the naval headquarters in a pincer attack. Sha Luo vaguely saw a warship moving rapidly on the tsunami. Oh, just like the original work, did you actually go to impel down? How did you get in? Even Sha Luo was a little surprised this time, he was watching the news, Luffy didn't do anything to beat up the celestial dragons. After he killed the Roswald family and kidnapped Shalulia, the five elders became extra cautious. The travel of celestial dragons has been restricted for a period of time. Even if they want to travel, they must bring members of the CP organization with them. I'm afraid that some female celestial dragons will broadcast live and cause chaos all over the world, which will really disgrace the world government. But fortunately, Sha Luo didn't really let Sha Lulia live broadcast to the whole world. Without the plot of celestial dragons, if Luffy really goes to Daughter Island, he will only die. Boa Hancock is not a talkative guy, but now Luffy actually appeared from Impel Down and came here. How did he do it? It's really interesting, let me wait and see. Sha Luo, who couldn't figure it out, stopped thinking about it and sat cross legged on Xiao Yin's back to watch the show. Just like the original work, before the tsunami was about to swallow these panicked marine soldiers, Aokiji took action. One move of Ice Age directly froze the tsunami that stretched for thousands of kilometers, and then he used a move of Double Thorn Spear on Whitebeard, but it had no effect. Instead, it was shattered by Whitebeard's shock fruit and fell to the sea, freezing the sea in the bay. Good guy, Aokiji, you have thick eyebrows and big eyes, you can also act, right? Wearing a smile and looking down at Aokiji's operations. Although there are many good ideas to freeze the sea so that ships cannot move forward, it also gives the other side a foothold. Everyone moved forward. Following Whitebeard's order, the members of the Whitebeard pirates jumped off the ship, followed closely by the captains. Ha ha ha, it really gave us a good place to stay, even the pirates couldn't help but complain. The melee began. Marine is no match for the Whitebeard pirates without the backbone of the force and admiral. Although the elite soldiers of Marine are gathered here, each one is very strong. Big but it is obvious that the pirates on the side of the Whitebeard pirates are stronger, most of the soldiers were defeated by the pirates in one-on-one -on -one situations. The rear admiral in this unit is not a captain-level opponent at all, he can only fight against some stronger but not captain-level guys in the Whitebeard pirates. However, before the casualties became more severe, the real backbone of the naval headquarters, the vice admirals, also took action. But Whitebeard's affiliated pirate group also approached the bay, and the ship crashed onto the ice. Suddenly, Ying, who had been playing the cool guy, jumped a step forward. Huh? Why use jumping? Sha Luo doesn't understand either, it still looks a bit weird. The Shichibukai around him all turned their attention to Hawkeye, still a little surprised by this move. Huh? What? Are you going to have sex? Doflamingo snorted coldly and asked. Just try to see how far the man in front of you, is from us. The magic eye rarely replied to Doflamingo's words, and his eyes gradually became serious. Then, Mono, slowly pulled out the black knife behind him, Yi, and swung out the classic too. Flat A. It's such an exaggerated slash, it even slashed the ground in the sea under the ice. Opened, worthy of being the greatest swordsman in the world. As both a swordsman, Sha Luo sees things more clearly. Hawkeye didn't just cut through the extremely thick ice, but also cut through the rocks below. 
If the water is drained, you can clearly see that a deep crack has been cut into the rock layer of the island below naval headquarters. Even Sha Luo had to praise this strike, even though he could do it easily. Bang! The shock wave of the slashing sword energy hit Diamond Josie who suddenly appeared in front, and was thrown into the sky by him. At this point, Hawkeye slowly sheathed the knife and made no further movements. It's really just one chop, is this what you said you were going to do? Sha Luo continued to complain. Huang Ji was not willing to be lonely at this time, and directly transformed into a flash of light and left his seat. Then it appeared in the sky in front of Whitebeard, followed by the iconic move 8 foot stroke jade. As we all know, it is impossible for the 8-foot stroke jade to hit someone's face without NS and Lu method. 01390322 Filu 183592530 This is just like Kazaru's laser can only hit the key accurately. But it just so happened that the one who took Kazaru's 8-foot stroke was none other than Brother Ma. All the attacks were caught by Brother Ma, and no one was missed. In the game, someone who can catch other people's bullets with his face so accurately can be regarded as having a different kind of talent. Don't blame others for hitting too accurately, just blame yourself for catching too well. The green flames continued to repair the position where Marco was injured. Marco's phoenix is different from Logia Devil Fruit. Although it also allows attacks to penetrate the body, it mostly repairs the body after sustaining damage. This is the ability brought by his phoenix phantom beast species. In chapter 155, the protagonist appears, and the world's strongest man begins to take action. It's so scary, a zone phantom beast species that is even rarer than Logia, Kazaru said in a sinister tone. After some attacks, Kazaru caught Marco's kick and got off work early. It was obvious that he was anxious to clock out early. Good guy, as expected of you, Kazaru, you're off work at that time, right? First, let's take a dive and damage our own public property. There is still a reason to get off work early. If it weren't for your undamaged clothes, I would have thought that you couldn't even withstand a kick from Brother Ma and got kicked away. Sha Luo watched Kazaru's acting skills happily and complained happily. But Brother Ma also has a few tricks up his sleeve. Kazaru couldn't take him down for a while. If Whitebeard hadn't been injured and distracted him, these captains would have been able to hold off these Hainanese generals for a while. The huge piece of ice thrown by Josie was at least about the same size as Oz. The giants were like children in front of this heavy piece of ice. Without Akainu's great eruption, these marine vice admirals would probably have been smashed. He was half dead, and all the marine soldiers below had to be wiped out. However, Akainu's great eruption is quite good when combined with the effect of volcanic bombs to clear minions. Sha Luo is also thinking about developing some large-scale AoE skills. It's boring to always use Conqueror's Hockey to clear the board. Didn't you see that Whitebeard and Sengoku never used Conquerors to clear the field from beginning to end? With the size of this square, even the next player was covered. He didn't believe that the Conqueror's team of Whitebeard, Sengoku and Garp couldn't completely clear the field. Suddenly, Sha Luo's perspective turned to a pink-haired soldier. At this moment, he was shivering in the center of the battlefield. Sha Luo looked at him with interest. Isn't this the guy known as Big Garp? The current deserter king is still relatively immature, but he actually awakened observation hockey on the battlefield. It's obvious that there is no fighting, but what kind of experience is it to awaken under fear? It's quite despicable. Then came little Oz. Compared to Pika's stone giant, Oz's size is much larger. It's only 38 meters in size, which is far different from Pika's behemoth of nearly 1000 meters. But with this size, Marine can define his threat to 550 million belly. Sha Luo still feels a little wet. It may be a little difficult for ordinary people, but for people with a little bit of strength, this kind of body type is completely useless. Even the most powerful Shichibukai and Gekko Moria can easily take care of him. 543 forget it, there is nothing good to see, they are all stinky men. It's better to see more of the Empress. Sha Luo turned her attention to the Empress Boya Hanku. She is worthy of the title of the most beautiful pirate. The opponent's appearance is not only beautiful, but also has a very good temperament, and his actions are elegant and beautiful when fighting. Coupled with her sweet fruits, it's an excellent combination. I have to say that the aesthetics of a certain comic artist is quite good. I want this woman more and more. Sha Luo looked at Hancock with burning eyes. At this time, the ice in the air was suddenly shattered. Huge warships fell from the sky. Sha Luo looked at the figures above and smiled slowly. Straw Hat Luffy, Conqueror's Luck Buggy, Crocodile, Jinbei, Wang Kong, Dot and the Chief of Staff of the Revolutionary Army, Sabo. Interesting, it's so interesting. The world line has been closed, but it has also changed. Straw Hat Luffy didn't sneak into Impel Down with the help of Hancock, but got help from the Revolutionary Army Kadri Sabo? Even Sha Luo couldn't help but applaud. The more chaotic the war, the more interesting it is. Revolutionaries, pirates, marines, Shichibukai, now it's a big melee between the four forces. Although the revolutionaries only have Ivankov and his harems plus Sabo. But Crocodile, why are you here to join in the fun? Could it be that you were also caught in Impel Down? After disappearing for so long, the CP troops silently recaptured Impel Down. No wonder there is no movement at all. 
Seeing Crocodile mixed up with Straw Hat Luffy, Sha Luo was still a little surprised. In his world, Crocodile and Straw Hat had no intersection. But fate still brought them to this battlefield together. But that's right, those guys from the Five Elders will definitely not let Crocodile go if they try to dig up the secrets buried by Alabasta. This guy has probably been labeled as a dangerous person by those guys from Five Elders. He is one of the people who need to be dealt with first. Sha Luo rubbed her chin and thought for a moment, then she felt relieved. The guys at Five Elders were extremely cautious and shrewd for once, probably because of their own influence. Whitebeard. The first time after falling into the war, Crocodile noticed Whitebeard and then rushed towards him. He's such a guy who can't remember his lessons. Whitebeard didn't even look at him, standing on the bow of the ship with a gloomy expression. Then Luffy also ran out to stop Crocodile's assassination. But even without him, Whitebeard can easily block Crocodile's sneak attack. It was also at this time that Luffy shouted out the most classic words. Crocodile, which evolved to version 2.0, stopped and left. Since the sneak attack failed, there was no need to continue to stay. Have you regained what you lost before? You can still continue to grow. Well, Crocodile, don't let me down. There are more things that Sha Luo can detect. The current Crocodile is much stronger than before, and at least he has initially regained the practice of observation hockey. The old actor also came into contact with his nephew. It's really hard work. You've been lifting your foot for more than 10 seconds, right? The light is so dazzling that Luffy still keeps running forward. Where is your second gear? If it weren't for the help of Sabo next to him, Luffy would have been knocked back to the starting point. Maybe my life will restart immediately. On Moria's side, Sha Luo has read the report from the news. After he was defeated by Sha Luo, he was defeated again by Luffy as in the original work. After being defeated by Sha Luo, he was sure that Moria had regained her confidence and ambition by then. But in the end he was defeated by the explosive protagonist, possibly because of the injuries Sha Luo left on him at that time. But he also got a huge boost from it. Sha Luo looked at the sun above her head, and then the zombies below. Moria can actually summon zombies out of the sea, and it's still in broad daylight. At least he has overcome the zombies' fear of salt and the sun now he can summon zombies during the day, and there are countless corpses for him to use in this battlefield. His advantage is quite big. As long as there are enough shadows, you can create unlimited zombies that are not afraid of life and death. These zombies will not be affected by the spirit of Conqueror's hockey. It seems that after experiencing failure, these Shichibukai no longer degenerate and have begun to slowly become stronger. But the awakening time is still too short. Even if I regain what I lost in the past, I can't compare with the protagonist and the strong one. Looking at Moria below who was punched away by Sabo's dragon claw, Sha Luo couldn't help but shook her head. The ability of the shadow fruit is very good, but Gecko Moria's imagination and development direction are not completely right. Merely developing zombies in strategic directions is not enough. If placed on top of other strong men, Shadow Mage can use a few more skills to achieve the purpose of group fights. The stronger the body's physical skills and strength, the stronger the Shadow Mage's combat power will be. Just imagine how powerful it would be for a few people with similar strength to the main body, and their clones to be able to ignore physical attacks and cooperate with the main body to fight. Rather than plundering other people's shadows, the real way to become stronger is to enhance your own shadow. Then Sha Luo looked elsewhere. The great vortex spider and Akainu began to have official contact. Here comes the famous scene of a dutiful son, but I won't let you disturb my mood of watching a good show. Sha Luo's eyes narrowed and his expression became serious. It would probably be more interesting if the uninjured Whitebeard fights against Akainu. How much damage can he do to the naval headquarters? Ha 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 ha. Sha Luo paid a little more attention to the situation on Whitebeard's side and was ready to interrupt the Vortex Spider's assassination. With Sabo's escort, Luffy is much smoother than in the original work. At least he is no longer passive when facing Smoker. Sabo knows armament hockey, and even without the Mara Mara fruit, the Dragon Claw Fist is enough to keep him under Admiral's hands for a while. Among the three brothers now, Sabo is probably the strongest. The battlefield became increasingly chaotic. The battle between the old and new Shichibukai, the battle between the Admiral and the Whitebeard Pirates, and the civil war between the Revolutionary Army and Bartholomew Kuma. But Hawkeye, don't you have Hockey's sword energy? There was no harm done to Buggy? As time went by, the Great Vortex Spider was successfully instigated after talking to Akainu. Silently he slipped up to Whitebeard's side and started talking to Whitebeard with a normal expression. Sha Luo calls him a good guy. As expected of a filial son, he still has some acting skills. After being incited to rebel, he couldn't be so calm and want to assassinate Whitebeard. He kept saying that he would go through fire and water for the Whitebeard pirates and fight to protect his family. But just as he was talking and drawing out his long knife, Sha Luo's fingers were already filled with lightning. Call out. A thunderbolt hit the sword in the hand of the Vortex Spider, clang. The long sword spun twice in the air, and then was inserted into the bow of the ship not far away. Everyone was stunned. This scene was also spread around the world through the image phone bug on the side of Buggy the Clown. The whole world was in shock, talking about Baituan's death. The most shocking thing was the big Vortex Spider, 
He thought he was going to succeed, but out of nowhere thunder and lightning hit his hand. Scarred. Why are you doing this? Answer me, Squeard. Marco reacted immediately and rushed to the bow of the ship and pressed Squeard to the ground. He is a little scared now. Originally, I was a little confused about Squeard's sudden appearance on the ship. But I didn't expect that I actually wanted to assassinate my father. Well, well, you didn't force me to do this. One. Squeard was pressed to the ground, his eyes closed tightly, and he struggled to say. What did you say? Do you know what you were doing? Marco didn't understand what he meant and still asked loudly. Eve. Whitebeard withdrew his surprised look, looked at Scarred who was being pressed beneath him, and then looked up at the sky. A small black dot caught his gaze, Tisk, trying to meddle in other people's business. Whitebeard pouted. This red lightning looked a bit familiar. I seem to have seen something similar just a few days ago. This is another favor that he owes Sha Luo, and he doesn't like this feeling of owing a favor. There is an enemy lurking, it's Whitebeard on one side? In the sky? Sengoku, Garp and others also noticed the lightning and looked up to the sky with shocked expressions. Although the lightning is very fast, their vision is not fake, and they can clearly predict the path of the lightning. They didn't know that Whitebeard also had this kind of helper, that he could fly in the sky and emit lightning. Damn it, did you fail? There is no such thing. Akainu cursed secretly and looked at the sky with a gloomy look. I didn't expect that there would be someone else disrupting the situation, who is it? It really almost succeeded. If Whitebeard was stabbed with the knife, he would be seriously injured even if he didn't die. Did you take action? Who is it at this time? Hawkeye also stopped and looked at the sky together. Sky. Bad feeling. A drop of cold sweat ran down Kazaru's lazy face. If possible, he must not be the person he imagined. Until now, he still has some shadows, and there is absolutely nothing he can do about him. But looking at Sengoku, Garp, and two other colleagues behind him, Kazaru breathed a sigh of relief. Even if it's really him, he can just swim through it and let others deal with him. Hurry up and get all the marines in the bay, we can't wait any longer, Sengoku immediately ordered. The pacifist army also surrounded them from outside the bay, and was about to surround and strangle the entire Whitebeard pirates here. Whitebeard's daily chat was over. After Scarred blew himself up, everyone knew about Marine's plan. After shattering the ice wall surrounding naval headquarters, the pirate group's momentum regained momentum. Whitebeard got really angry and jumped off the ship. The strongest man in the world is about to start fighting seriously. Boom. Burly Whitebeard on the ice after jumping from Moby Dick. Chapter 239 the protagonist appears on the stage, and the world's strongest man begins to take action, there is a puff of smoke and dust. Facing countless incoming artillery fire, he just waved his fist forward. The power of the vibration shattered the space, and the power of the vibration returned all the cannonballs to their original count. Whitebeard pointed Kong Yunki in his hand, and countless pirates shouted and rushed forward. Oh, it's troublesome, we can't let them break through to the square like this. Kazaru scratched his head and said with a headache. He still wants to be good at fishing but if the performance continues like this, Mr. Sengoku will probably doubt him. But just at this moment, the giant Vice Admiral John Jadun jumped out to prevent the pirates from landing in the square. Kazaru breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed that he didn't have to work overtime, he didn't want to face Whitebeard. Let Akainu do this thankless task, Akainu will definitely be happy with it. Chapter 156 The Bursting Blast Bomb of Destruction Opposite this unknown giant, Vice Admiral, Whitebeard directly put the cloud cutter in his hand aside. Then his hands seemed to be tearing something apart, and Whitebeard pulled out a scratch in the air. Be careful, Dad is getting serious. The pirates loudly informed their companions. The sharp sword in his hand was firmly inserted into the ice to fix himself. Those without swords grabbed the arms of their companions to steady themselves, otherwise he will be thrown away. What? John was still surprised by Whitebeard's sudden move, but within a few seconds, he felt that his vision was constantly changing. It seems, why is the Whitebeard in front of me crooked? No, no, when he looked further away, he saw it. The sea, was torn into several pieces, all tilted. The marine side was unprepared. Countless ordinary soldiers fell from the square. Some fell into the sea and were swept into the deep sea. Others fell into the ice in the bay and were directly surrounded by pirates. A long time. The movement slowly calmed down. The naval headquarters has been torn apart. Although the entire building has not collapsed, the building on the front has been seriously damaged. What a terrifying power but in the name of Marine's absolute justice, we will never let you pass here. The giant Vice Admiral John struggled to his feet, grabbed the sword beside him, and swung it hard at Whitebeard. See this. Whitebeard jumped up, accumulating the energy of shock fruit in his hand, and punched the air in front of John. Bang. A powerful force of vibration passed through him, and the surface ice along the way was blown away, and the shock wave went straight to the direction of the execution platform. Boom. The sound of destruction sounded, another building was destroyed, and a burst of smoke rose from the execution platform. Did you make it? The pirates raised their hands excitedly and were about to celebrate, but their expressions immediately froze. After the smoke cleared, 
The traffic light trio was blocking the execution platform. Use armament hockey to counteract this shaking force. Helpless, the pirates could only charge again. But suddenly, iron walls rose up one after another in the bay, except for the place where Xiao Shizi came down. The heavy body blocked the rise of the iron wall, and the blood soaked the power of the mechanism. Tisk, there's nothing we can do, Akainu. Melt the ice so those guys have no place to stand. Sengoku frowned and immediately gave the order decisively. Akainu stepped forward silently, his hands turning into hot lava. Meteor Volcano. Akainu's hands are like Gatling guns, constantly spraying out fireworks one after another. But the location of his spray is actually in the sky, you ride on the horse. Sha Lua looked at the magma punches passing by one after another, and a hash mark appeared on his forehead. Lousy is riding a horse to watch the show, and you spray lava punch it Lousy? Do you really want me to end early? Bang! Xiao Yin grabbed an incoming magma fist and crushed it casually. The temperature of the magma is just a bath for him, his indestructible dragon scales and physique are not just decorations. The younger brother Yan Wanglong can bathe in magma, and its scales can withstand the high temperatures caused by supersonic flight and the high temperature erosion of dragon energy. Huh, forget it, don't be angry with him. Sha Luo exhaled, frowned, then pointed to a Kainu below and said, Xiaoyan, please reciprocate the courtesy and give him some gifts in return. Yes, he is not angry, it would be unreasonable for him not to give a Kainu a gift as a gift. Here. Red lightning began to accumulate in Xiaoyan's mouth, and through its mouth you could see the red light spreading wantonly inside. Go. Explosive wind bomb of destruction. Sha Luo stepped on Xiao Yin's back with his big foot, pointed his fingertips at the execution platform below, and shouted out the name of a move that was extremely accurate. This can be regarded as a seahorse for his small cuz. It's quite fun to play like this when there's no one around, but it's a bit embarrassing when there are so many people. Giant thunder bullets emitting red light ejected from Xiao Yan's mouth, flying towards the execution platform at an extremely fast speed. This super giant thunderball can easily cover everyone on the execution platform. If it hits, ordinary soldiers and ace, who is locked by the sea stone, will definitely die. Even the vice admiral of the headquarters couldn't take Xiao Yin's attack. However, there are five admirals below. I believe they can still solve it easily, right? The corners of Sha Luo's mouth raised slightly, revealing a playful smile. The pirate marine below is still wondering why Akainu used his move to hit the sky. Akainu looked confident, the brim of his hat blocked his expression, and he pretended not to look at the sky. But what awaited first was not his endless magma punch. Look. What is that? The pirates raised their hands and pointed to the sky, and a stream of red light came down from the sky and went straight towards Marine. The sudden movement also made a kind of frown. He couldn't help but look up, and a giant red light was about to hit where they were standing. What's happening here? A kind couldn't help shouting loudly, then he raised his right fist again. Great eruption, eight foot beautiful Magatama. Ice cube storm pheasant mouth. Three admiral reacted and at the same time took action to block the approach of the red light. Boom. A huge explosion exploded in the sky not far from naval headquarters, lightning flashes everywhere. The ice cubes and magma were exploded in all directions, and landed on the marine in the square minus zero. Ah, oh, it would be okay if they were hit by an ice cube. Given their physical abilities, it would only hurt or cause minor injuries. Those who were hit by the lava were unlucky, as the unmelted lava directly burned some people's bodies. A violent storm swept across the entire battlefield. What's going on? Are you using your own moves to hit yourself? You're so stupid, ha 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 ha. The pirates who didn't understand the reason laughed loudly at Akainu and began to gloat about his misfortune. But soon they stopped laughing, because Akainu's magma fist has begun to fall from the sky. Now it was the pirates' turn to scream. The magma melted the ice and heated the surface water to the point of boiling. Those with thick skin can still swim to the seaside, but those with thin skin have sunk into the sea forever. Ahem, is it that guy hiding in the sky? Damn it, he actually came here to trick me into sneak attack. Sengoku coughed twice dispersed the surrounding smoke with a wave of his hand, and shouted angrily. It's impossible, the enemy is above 10,000 meters in the air. It's difficult to reach that height even with electric steps. Kazaru spread his hands helplessly, expressing his helplessness. But the real situation is that he can achieve it, but fighting in that situation is not comfortable, there is no land, and he has to endure the lack of air at high altitudes, and his combat effectiveness will be reduced. Of course he didn't want to do such a thankless thing. Damn it, can't we just passively accept his attacks? It can fly to high altitudes and emit such powerful thunder and lightning. Is it the demon fruit power of some kind of phantom beast? Sengoku's brain was thinking rapidly, looking for the pirate who had this ability in his mind. But no one can compare with it. Those who have the ability to fly do not have such powerful thunder and lightning, and those who can produce thunder and lightning do not have this kind of flight ability. Then who could it be? Sengoku's brows were furrowed and he couldn't relax for a long time. Han after being baptized by magma and cannonballs, Luffy fell directly into the ocean. But the protagonist of the original world, with Jinbei and Sabo following him, naturally didn't die easily. As a fishman, 
Jinbei swam in the sea at extremely fast speeds and fished him up. After being picked up, Luffy tightly grabbed Jinbei's clothes and asked with an anxious look on his face to send him to the square. Seeing the determination in Luffy's eyes, Jinbei struggled for a while but finally agreed. Seeing Luffy's stubborn eyes, Sabo also softened his heart and could only deal with it silently. He knew he couldn't stop Luffy, but even if Luffy did get there, what could he do? There is absolutely no way Luffy can beat three admirals. But, so what, from the moment he chose to come to rescue Ace despite Long's dissuasion, he had already made up his mind to die. He did not choose to join the Revolutionary Army's fighting force, but came alone. It was just a coincidence that he met Ivankov and impelled down. In response to this, Long could only cover his forehead and get a headache. Sabo, who is usually calm, is also so stubborn and loses his mind when faced with the life and death of his brother. He began to complain about why Shang sent Luffy to the Revolutionary Army headquarters. In that case, let me go with you, Sabo also had a firm look in his eyes and smiled. That is his brother, so what if he is Marine Admiral, even if he fights to the death, he cannot let his brother die here like this. Sabo. Luffy grinned happily, later, after receiving treatment from Ivankov. Jinbei was thrown over his shoulder by the sea current, and the seawater threw the two of them in front of the three admiral. Look at the two people in front of you. Kazaru was calm on the surface, but he was already scolding MMP inside. Didn't you see that there was a deep frown on his calm face? Alala. We are finally here, Aokiji said calmly. The son of the dragon and the chief of general staff of the revolutionary army are really fearless, Akainu showed disdain. It's really scary to be so young, two of his colleagues had spoken, so if he didn't speak, wouldn't his secret be revealed? Kazaru also made some perfunctory remarks at the right time. Damn Jinbei, how dare you send my nephew here, see if I don't give you two laser shots later. No, two shots are not enough. Kazaru cursed in his mind. Give me Ace back. Luffy picked up a mast and threw it directly towards the three admirals. Aokiji froze the mast with just a touch, then pushed back slightly. Luffy directly used his feet to break the mast that turned into ice into pieces, and then kicked it back. The three admirals were posing like this, with the ice passing through their bodies. Akainu, who was under intensive care, had the lava on his body melt the ice cubes and raise the heat. The smoke raised by the ice cubes falling to the ground blocked the three people's vision. It was at this time that Luffy shifted out of second gear and rushed behind the three of them. I don't have time to fight you guys. Luffy only left these words, and the figure had already appeared in the distance. Go, Luffy, leave this place to me. Sabo's hands turned into dragon claws, and Huang rushed forward. Um, Akainu raised his head and frowned, wanting to turn around and attack Luffy. Kazaru suddenly became nervous, and immediately said in a pretentious manner, I really like to be clever, as if he was eager to try. Then in Akainu and Aokiji's strange eyes turned into flashes of light and appeared next to Luffy. Sabo, who suddenly lost his target, stopped where he was. He was just afraid that Kazaru would be too fast to stop Luffy, so he chose him as his first target. I didn't expect to run so fast, too slow, Kazaru said something pretentious again, and then kicked Luffy directly into the house next to him with a quick kick. With a bang, the house was only half destroyed, but it didn't completely collapse. Is Kazaru's light speed just enough to knock down half a house? Oh, it turns out there is Marine nearby, so I'm afraid of accidentally getting hurt. I understand, I understand. No wonder Kazaru can act so openly. Sha Luo in the sky clapped again. It was difficult for him to be able to kick such a weak light speed kick. It must be difficult to control the power. Which of the supernovas next door wasn't kicked half a street and penetrated more than a dozen houses? In other words, he should be gentler with his nephew. After the smoke dispersed, Luffy coughed twice. It looked like he was only slightly injured and was not completely incapacitated. Seeing this, Sabo also breathed a sigh of relief. However, in this little gap, Marine King soldiers had already surrounded him. Facing so many Marine soldiers, Sabo did not dare to be careless. Among them are some guys from Rear Admiral and Branch Vice Admiral. These people can't defeat him alone but it's still a bit tricky if they go together. Damn, what a bunch of annoying guys. Sabo could only deal with these annoying marines first. Neither Akainu nor Aokiji had any intention of taking action, leaving Marine and Sabo to fight. Prepare for execution. At this time, Sengoku, who was standing on the high platform, said calmly. Yes, the two marines immediately raised their swords. Do it. As Sengoku yelled, the two swords fell down hard. Ace just lowered his head and remained silent. Everyone shouted Ace's name loudly, and they all looked frightened, call out. Two sand blades broke through the wooden floor of the execution platform from bottom to top, knocking the two marines away. Who is it? Sengoku suddenly turned his head and looked down, his eyes began to become bloodshot. You bastard! I thought that you, who had a feud with Whitebeard, would be helpful to us, Crocodile. HMPH, I will take care of that dying old man by myself later, but before that, I don't want to see your happy faces. Crocodile is very pretentious Kaido. Call out. This bee handsome man only lasted three seconds, and in the next moment, his head flew high into the sky. 
Then it fell to the ground and turned into a pool of yellow sand. At the same time, an obscene voice sounded from Marine. Hey, hey, crocodile bastard, are you going to dump me and join forces with Whitebeard? Doflamingo slowly walked out of Marine with steps that he didn't recognize. I will be jealous, he he he. Doflamingo looked at Crocodile sullenly and let out a lewd laugh. I won't join forces with anyone. Crocodile's head was quickly reorganizing, his eyes moved back a little, and he spoke in a cold tone. Haha, do you still want to use me? So be it. The two of them looked gloomy and fell silent to each other. Marine, who was unaware, just listened to the conversation between the two and thought they had some ulterior secret. Chapter 157 Actors from all walks of life show their outstanding acting skills. After a moment of silence, the two of them took action at the same time. The impact broke out at the point where the two came into contact. The two retreated in tacit agreement, and then a fierce battle broke out. I don't know what happened, but luckily I was saved. Luffy struggled to get up and sighed with lingering fear. Go to hell, Straw Hat. A pirate soldier rushed forward with a knife. But it was solved in a few moments. Another rear admiral level figure stood in front of Luffy again, and after punching Luffy with his iron body, he fell to the ground happily. Stop Straw Hat Luffy. We can't let him get closer, the marine soldiers shouted. This caught Akainu's attention. Looking over there, Sabo couldn't escape from marine surroundings, so he slowly walked towards Luffy. Sakazuki Admiral, the marine soldier exclaimed. As soon as Akainu took two steps, Aokiji beside him couldn't sit still. Call out. Only a small pile of ice debris was left in place. Akainu frowned, with two big questions in his eyes. Why are both of them competing to deal with Straw Hat Luffy? Kazaru is the same, and so is Aokiji. He felt very confused, but Aokiji has already taken action, so there is no need for him to rush to take action anymore, bump. Cold air shot out from Aokiji's hand, forming an ice saber that hit Luffy's shoulder steadily. Kazaru was so frightened that cold sweat broke out on his forehead. Afraid that Aokiji would hit too accurately, he directly shot Straw Hat Luffy in the head. Good guy, is it possible that you, Aokiji, with thick eyebrows and big eyes, are also an undercover revolutionary? Seeing this, Sha Luo was also very surprised. Aokiji's operation was really abnormal. Your grandfather was kind to me, but he can't help it anymore. This is the dead end you chose as a man. Aokiji pulled out the ice blade that was stuck on Luffy's shoulder, held it up and spoke slowly. Good guy, just drag it hard. Didn't you see Brother Ma rushing to the rescue? 923, can your knife be slower? Another actor, Sha Luo complained silently in the air. Sure enough, Aokiji was kicked out by Marco with a knife and his men. Seeing this, Kazaru, who was watching from the other side, also breathed a sigh of relief. Akainu actually just watched Luffy being rescued silently and did not choose to take action. At this time, there was also a strange movement in the bay. A giant battleship actually rose from the bottom of the sea again. Little Oz, who had been knocked down, woke up at some point and rushed to the square with the ship in his arms. It was precisely because of this movement that Akainu ignored Luffy and turned around to walk in the direction of Whitebeard. After Whitebeard arrived at the square, he fired a shock explosion and cleared the marine area in front of him, but there was still a steady stream of personnel to replenish it. Garp. Now, we can't just sit back and watch. Sengoku rolled up his sleeves and looked like he was going to do something big. But Aokiji actually fought with Whitebeard first, but in Diamond Josie. With the intervention, Aokiji was slightly injured and was intercepted. At this time, Luffy started running again. Kazaru also had a headache. After being intercepted by two vice admirals, he personally stopped them in front of them. Then he deliberately missed a laser shot, blasting Luffy in front of him, and then kicked him back to Whitebeard. Nice, please stop running around. Just stay behind Whitebeard and wait for a chance to escape. Kazaru said helplessly in his heart, but he was taunting Whitebeard. Oh, Whitebeard, you are too old and confused. A man like you actually lets such a senseless waste take the lead. After saying that, he charged up the laser on his finger. Whitebeard, you should understand what I mean, quickly leave this kid behind. Kazaru almost hinted at Whitebeard opposite him with a wink. Just in time, Ivankov's appearance also interrupted his attempt to continue charging the laser. After throwing Luffy behind him, Whitebeard also raised the cloud cutter, a shockwave attached to the blade, and swung it forward fiercely. Clang. Unfortunately, Akainu stepped down directly, and the two of them officially started to explode. Fierce fighting. Finally the real drama begins. Whitebeard, who is not injured, versus Akainu, who can win this battle. Sha Luo watched the conflict between the two people below with interest and grinned. During this period, Marco also wanted to rush to the execution platform, but was directly punched to the ground by Garp. Kazaru also got entangled in this, at least facing Marco was not as tiring as facing Whitebeard directly. It would be nice to fish in troubled waters for a while, the salary is only so small, is it worth working hard for? Because Whitebeard was not injured, Josie and Marco were not directly captured by the other two admirals due to distraction. Their strength can still resist admiral for a while, it's just that Diamond Josie was a little stressed when facing Aokiji. The compatibility is not very good, 
If it were Kazaru's sparkling fruit, his diamond defense would still be effective. However, it is the cold energy of frozen fruit that makes him use hockey more intensively and physically. Whitebeard and Akainu also started to use real fire. Powerful attacks were thrown out one after another, and both of them were covered in paint. Although Whitebeard was already old, he was obviously not stabbed in the back by the dutiful son. I can still hold on for a while. The overbearing vibration force also made Akainu very uncomfortable. He had just received a shock to his solid front, and was hammered directly into the building below the execution platform, leaving a big hole. If Haki hadn't protected him in time, this blow would have seriously injured him. Sengoku and Garp actually looked unmoved and had no intention of going to support them. Sengoku originally wanted to have a big fight but at some point he put his hands back into his pockets. Damn old bastard, why don't you die? Akainu rushed back again, shouting angrily, and the magma was condensed in his fist. It's a hundred years too early for a brat like you to want to kill me. Whitebeard also responded unceremoniously, releasing the power of shock without reservation. Boom. The powerful impact threw away everyone within a few hundred meters of the two people. Only the strong ones could barely stand still. The new executioner has arrived in front of the execution platform. Sha Luo doesn't know why Marine is in so much trouble, he needs to be executed if he kills anyone. Only when people come. At this time, Luffy also burst out Conqueror's hockey and stunned the executioner, which shocked the New World Pirates and Marines. Sure enough, it's something you're born with. Garp, who was sitting on the seats of the admirals, looked gloomy and spoke slowly. Then, just like the original work, Whitebeard saw the shadow of the new era in Luffy, and he chose to believe in the red-haired Luffy who bet on the new era. Putting the key to rescuing Ace on Luffy, he asked all his men to support him, while he stayed alone to stop most of the marines and Akainu. Luffy lived up to expectations, punching Fang Hai's Garp down with one punch, and stuck him on the ground with his head on the ground. This acting skill is much inferior to that of his apprentice Aokiji. Luffy also successfully climbed onto the execution platform. Okay, it's finally time for me to appear. Sha Luo slowly stood up, twisted her waist, and moved her body. Watching the battle for so long really makes my blood boil, so let's start with you, Doflamingo. An excited smile appeared on Sha Luo's face. After seeing such a battle, even he couldn't help but get excited. Luffy, who was on the execution platform, talked to Ace in an arrogant manner, and took out a key from nowhere. Sengoku on the side frowned so hard that he could pinch a garb to death. It's all the fault of Garp for causing such a farce. There is no other way. In this case, I, the marshal, can only do it myself. Sengoku's whole body began to glow golden, then it began to expand into an oversized golden fat man. The execution platform was shattered with one punch, and the marine soldiers also successfully sent a wave of assists, blasting the execution platform to pieces with cannons, and the smoke covered the location of the execution platform. Mr. 3 Mr. 3, which Sha Luo did not care about in Alabasta, also successfully played a big role. The flames penetrated through the thick smoke, forming a channel of flames, three people also jumped out. What a gaff! even though I'm here, Sengoku said with a gloomy look on his face. It's so troublesome to kill someone, he deserves to be rescued. Sha Luo couldn't help but complain. Later, Whitebeard also chose to stay alone, just like in the original novel. Ace and Luffy also officially gathered with Sabo, and the three brothers hugged each other happily. But the good times didn't last long, and the tranquility was broken by Akainu who was chasing after him. Ace was also struck by Suda's lava as in the original plot. Whitebeard looked back and saw this scene with eyes wide open, he was about to use his shock fruit ability, but Kazaru on the side had been waiting for this moment for a long time. After Marco got rid of him, he got entangled with Whitebeard, and he finally caught this opportunity to increase the performance of Marine. You were careless, Whitebeard. Kazaru pouted his lips and said very obscenely. At the same time, a laser shot out of his hand and penetrated the arm Whitebeard wanted to swing out. What a gorgeous funeral, Whitebeard. Suddenly, a voice sounded from the sky. Whitebeard and Marine's top combat powers all set their sights on the sky. There was a sound of breaking through the air. A red flame like a meteor fell rapidly from the sky. B plus 4. Marine and the pirates stopped what they were doing in a tacit understanding at the same time. The pirates who were running away one second and the pursuing Marine stopped together the next second and looked above their heads in surprise. Before they could clearly see the object above their heads, the meteor had already cut through the sky and landed directly in the center of the battlefield. Boom. A huge explosion occurred at the point of contact between the ground and the comet. Who is it? The guy who has been hiding in the sky watching the battle. Sengoku yelled angrily, and even Garp, who was suppressing him, couldn't help but cast his gaze there. The smoke filled the air, and everyone could only hear the sound of a footfall, but no one could be seen. Call out. With a wave of Sha Luo's hand, the strong wind blew away the smoke, revealing his face. That smiling face with excitement, passion and excitement. Golden Lion 2 Sha Luo. Sengoku gritted his teeth and shouted with hatred every word, You guy? This war should have nothing to do with you? Why? Why would you appear here? Sengoku's roar reached the ears of everyone on the battlefield. Sha Luo? 
Marco turned back and looked at the center of the battlefield, his eyes filled with doubts. What an exaggerated way to appear. Sha Luo, why are you coming down here? If you're watching a show, there's no need for you to get involved, right? Whitebeard looked at him sideways and said in a serious tone. If you really want to say it, then I like it. Sha Luo spread her hands and said nonchalantly. You arrogant brat, do you think of this battlefield as a place for your own fun just because you like it? Forget it, do as you like. I'm very angry right now. I have to go find the guy over there to sell the score first. Whitebeard frowned and glanced at him. This feeling of being like a toy on someone else's chessboard made him very unhappy. This battlefield seems to be controlled by him, monitored in real time and causing certain interference. Scooyard's previous assassination was killed by a thunderbullet from him, I'm afraid. He was afraid that he would have seen Akainu's behavior in the sky and was ready to interrupt Scooyard's assassination. However, he still owed Sha Luo a favor, and this was the end of his chosen life, so he didn't care about Sha Luo's behavior that made him unhappy. But when Sha Luo appeared, he suddenly remembered something he had gotten from him before. If that bean is as powerful as he said, then Ace can still be saved. Now he must rush to Ace Calendar. Tisk, is that the guy in the sky who is causing trouble? There is actually a rather troublesome person here. Akainu frowned and said in a very irritable tone. Forget it, let's deal with Long's son first and then leave that guy here. Saying this, Akainu raised his fist, and then hit Luffy and the still alive Ace hard. This time, Akainu did not leave them time to talk, but chose to kill them immediately. At this critical moment, Jinbei stood in front of the two of them and caught Akainu's magma with his palm. The hot magma also burned his palms, but even so, he did not show any sign of cowardice, nor did he cry out in pain. The impact of hockey, which both of them used simultaneously, made them both stop. Then Marco, Bista and Sabo all rushed forward to support. Under Akainu's powerful observation hockey, attacks rich in armament hockey have no effect at all. Akainu transformed into a ball of hot lava and wanted to deliver the final blow to Luffy and the two. But it was still blocked by 5.8 Marco, but it didn't hold out for long, and then it was knocked away by Akainu who was full of firepower. Akainu wanted to continue chasing, but suddenly, he stopped. He had an angry expression just now, but now he stood there blankly like a husky changing his face. Akainu felt a chill down his spine and couldn't help but slowly turned his head. All he saw was Whitebeard's extremely gloomy face, and his extremely powerful Conqueror's hockey impact. This Conqueror's hockey was only aimed at him, and at such a close distance, even he was affected and lost his mind for a moment. It was at this moment that Whitebeard's fist covered with shock force had already hit his face, and the air seemed to be distorted. The powerful force seemed to shatter his body into pieces, and his head was slightly shaken. This power is rich in armament hockey, so it's too late for him to elementalize. But at least I managed to hold on. After dodging Whitebeard's jump slash, he started to get entangled with him, and then found a flaw and hit Whitebeard in the stomach with Dark Hound. Akainu, who thought Whitebeard was unable to resist, began to taunt, then his head was caught without warning. The force of the shock made his head buzz, as if his brain was about to be shattered. Immediately afterwards, he was abandoned by Whitebeard, and the strongest air shock hit him on the waist. Starting from Akainu's waist, the naval headquarters was torn apart by the force of the shock, and ten large cracks were opened between the sea chamber and the sea. Akainu also fell limply to the ground, then rubbed the ground with his face facing the ground and fell into the crack. Even before falling, he never forgot to put down his harsh words. Whitebeard breathed a sigh of relief, ignoring the burning hole in his stomach, and walked straight to Ace's side. Chapter 158 starts to stir up trouble. Dad. Marco rushed to his side anxiously, looking at the big hole in his belly, his palms trembling slightly. Then he covered Whitebeard's wounds with his own flames. He is the doctor on Whitebeard's ship. Phoenix's ability can not only fight, but also heal, and can also affect friendly forces. It's just that the effect is not as powerful as the high-speed regeneration of the main body. The other side, after Whitebeard left, Sha Luo spread her hands helplessly. Obviously he is the protagonist, why do you want me to face this battlefield first? There are two admirals here, and two veterans with terrifying strength. What an irresponsible old guy, you are right, Doflamingo. Sha Luo's perspective turned to Huang Mao on the side. The latter had a look of fear on his face, and beads of sweat could not help but form on his forehead. It's okay to let him fish in troubled waters and complain on the battlefield, but if he really has to face people of the four emperors level, he won't be so tough talking. Sha Luo's first target was this little Wang Mao, so when Tian Weilong landed, of course he chose a battlefield near him. It's just that he was lucky. He noticed the abnormality in the sky first, and then avoided Xiao Yin's cute stars flying into the sky. Hey, we probably don't know each other. Why did you talk to me as soon as you came up? And that move just now was also aimed at me. So, is there any grudge between us? Facing Sha Luo's invisible pressure, Doflamingo asked with a reluctant smile. Now his eyes under his sunglasses revealed great doubts. Eh, how come you don't recognize my voice so quickly? It really makes me sad. I even prepared a big gift just for coming to see you. Sha Luo pretended to be heartbroken, then waved his hand, and a black shadow fell from the sky. 
snapped. A black shadow fell in front of Doflamingo. It was the cadres of the Don Quixote family. At this time, they had basically had their blood drawn and had become human beings. They were just hanging on for breath and not yet dead. Gaisa and Judge were really ruthless in their attacks. 24. They were really in a state of immortality, but they were trying to get closer to death. Doflamingo's pupils were dilated, and he looked at his, family members, who didn't know whether they were alive or dead on the ground, and anger welled up in his heart. Conqueror's hockey emanated from his body unconsciously, and Banes appeared on his forehead. Since you can't recognize it, let me remind you. Monet is really smooth. Seeing this, Sha Luo added to the fire in a very naughty manner and said with a playful look. Boom. Doflamingo couldn't bear it any longer, and his little yellow hair fluttered with the burst of his conqueror's hockey. Tai Ba. Scarlet light reflected from his sunglasses. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, Dressrosa is mine now. All the money, treasures, and supplies you put in the castle are now mine. Not enough, not enough. Sha Luo added a handful of firewood again. He finds it very interesting to see the angry Doflamingo. He likes to see other people's expressions when they are very angry, but they can't do anything about it. However, Sha Luo's last words were the last straw that crushed Doflamingo's sanity. His family was tortured to death by Sha Luo, his kingdom was stolen, and even his treasures were not left behind. All his long-term plans and hard work were ruined. How could he possibly endure this? You bastard! How dare you do such a thing to my family? I will never let you go today! Starting from Doflamingo's feet, the ground and buildings began to turn into white lines. After a while, Two Flamingo Jolie's buildings and ground all turned into countless white lines. What is this? Help! The marine soldiers stood on the white line. One of them fell in before he could stand and was swallowed by the white line. Sengoku, who was not far away, frowned when he saw this scene. The awakening of fruit power. He could tell at a glance that this ability to change the environment came from the awakening of the fruit's ability. Hey, Doflamingo, if you attack marine like this, I will never let you off lightly. Immediately, he shouted loudly to Doflamingo. Cut. The latter groaned in displeasure, but still controlled the white thread to spit out those marines. Saved. The rescued marine soldiers looked like they were surviving. Normally, Doflamingo wouldn't care so much. But now that he's doing this kind of thing in front of Marshal Marine, it's better to restrain himself. And. Marine is also his help in dealing with Sha Luo. Now Sha Luo is looking for trouble. If he cannot be solved, there will be endless troubles. It is impossible to defeat Sha Luo just by relying on his own strength. He still knows himself. So we have to rely on Marine's power, white line of raging waves. All the white threads gathered around Sha Luo, and then surrounded them like Sha Luo's earth coiling, wrapping tightly around the enemy until they were strangled to death. Did you make it? Looking at the sphere wrapped in a cocoon of white threads, Two Flamingo asked in question. Four Emperor's level characters will definitely not be killed so easily just because of their fruit awakening abilities, but it should have some effect, right? What nonsense are you talking about? You don't think these soft things can really kill me, do you? At this time, Sha Luo's voice came from inside the giant tomb. Boom. There was an explosion. The crimson thunder and lightning exploded all the white threads surrounding Sha Luo in an extremely violent manner. Revealed inside was the smiling face that made Doflamingo extremely disgusted. At this moment, he felt extremely terrifying pressure coming towards him. But he couldn't just back down, otherwise it would prove that he was afraid of Sha Luo. Hey, Sengoku, this guy should also be your target, right? This guy has blocked your plans many times just now. Do you want to join forces to kill him first? Doflamingo did not continue to pursue, but instead shouted loudly to Sengoku on the other side. Sengoku ignored him, but looked at Sha Luo with a very serious expression. Sha Luo, what is your purpose here? Don't make fun of what you said to Whitebeard before. Sengoku asked with a serious face and a calm tone. Doflamingo didn't look good. His suggestion was actually ignored by Sengoku. This made him lose face. Huh? Doesn't this statement sound like a joke? Sha Luo scratched his head and said with a look of confusion. This look made Sengoku very angry. Stop joking. What you've been doing since your debut is. With a very obscure purpose. It wasn't until you accepted Nico Robin that your ugly purpose was exposed. Sengoku waved his hand angrily and shouted angrily at Sha Luo. Huh, my purpose, isn't it to hang out with beautiful girls? If you marines hadn't been looking for trouble, I wouldn't have become a pirate. Faced with Sengoku's unreasonable anger, Sha Luo rubbed her chin with her hands and said with a weird expression. To hang out with a woman. What kind of joke are you kidding? Hearing Sha Luo's explanation, Sengoku looked surprised, and then wanted to yell angrily, but then he remembered Sha Luo's crew and stopped immediately. It seems, Sha Luo has been looking for some young and beautiful women as crew members since her debut. At the beginning, she didn't try to steal money from civilians, but fought against pirates to get bounties and travel around. For this reason, Sengoku also wants to win over Sha Luo. With the strength he has shown in the early stage, it is not a problem at all to become the next admiral. This is indeed the case. Sha Luo 
who did not join Marine, has reached the level of Emperor of the Sea by virtue of her own growth, and it only took two years. Then how do you explain what happened in Coco West Village? You massacred an entire Marine base's soldiers. Your purpose was just for the military expenses, equipment, and weapons in Marine Base. Sengoku put aside the topic just now and brought up another matter again. He felt very confused about many of Sha Luo's actions. If you want a safe adventure, why do you want to go against Marine? That thing? You still have the nerve to say it. Obviously it's you Marine who doesn't know how to live or die. A guy with low strength actually set his sights on me and even assisted the evil dragon in his evil deeds. It's been bad for so long. This will cause some of the crew members on my ship to suffer a lot. I am doing nothing but eliminating harm for the people. You still put the blame on me after that, and I haven't even settled the matter with you yet. Sha Luo said with an indignant look, and then started to talk about all kinds of corrupt and dark things in Marine. You, Marine, have assembled a lot of talented people. You claim to be maintaining the order that protects the sea, but behind the scenes there are a lot of scum who are exploiting the local civilians. Afterwards, you even put the blame on me, a five-star good citizen. Don't be shameless. Quote. Sengoku was left speechless, but he could not admit these things. There are so many Marines present. Once this kind of thing is admitted, it will be a huge blow to many young Marines, and even doubt the justice of the Marines. You're a lying kid who has done so many evil things and still wants to deny it. Don't even think about leaving this square today. Sengoku blushed and said through gritted teeth, then golden light emitted from his body, which was a sign that he was about to transform into a giant Buddha. He knew that those previous words were Sha Luo's sarcasm towards him. Colonel Mouse teamed up with Arlong to oppress the people and were eventually eliminated. Arlong's Sha Luo. When the pot is served, there must be some mouse reasons in it. But in the end, after Sha Luo's identity was exposed, he chose to put the blame on Sha Luo, and he made the mouse gang into marine heroes who sacrificed their lives to protect civilians. This was all done to lose face at the marine party. Being ridiculed by Sha Luo now makes him feel very tortured and embarrassed, but he will never admit it. Tisk, tisk, you're cheating now, right? I really belong to you, Sengoku. No wonder marine is so dark. The upper beam is not straight and the lower beam is crooked. I guess those people became like this because they imitated your style. Sha Luo clicked her tongue twice, with an expression of contempt and disdain on her face. This is what Sengoku does, but there is no need for him to be upset about this. Stop using your words. You, a criminal, have no right to discuss Marine's behavior. Sengoku has completed his transformation, and a golden Buddha appears on the battlefield. Even Whitebeard, who rushed to support Ace, couldn't help but look back. It seems that Sengoku is really angry. This kid is really interesting. After saying that, he stopped staying. The situation over there was still very urgent. Every second that passed, Ace was in danger for one more second. His current hopes can all be pinned on the fairy bean given by Sha Luo. Forget it, I'm not here to argue with you world government watchdogs. Sha Luo spread her hands and said casually. What an arrogant brat. With this arrogant attitude, does our Navy 133rd Army really have no one left? No matter what purpose you have here, I will never let your conspiracy succeed as long as I am here. Buddha's shockwave. When Sha Luo called Marine a watchdog, Sengoku shouted angrily, and then he gathered golden energy waves with his hands and sprayed them towards Sha Luo's figure. Go away quickly. Marshal Sengoku is going to be angry. The Marine soldier next to him shouted anxiously, and then everyone quickly retreated, leaving a passage for Sengoku to facilitate his attack. The golden energy wave hits Sha Luo, which is much more powerful than Mengdu's laser. Since you are chasing me so hard to ask questions, I will tell you in person. Facing the shock wave coming straight at him, Sha Luo's expression remained unchanged, without even blinking, he spoke in a light tone. As the shock wave gradually approached, Sha Luo assumed a posture of Whitebeard using shock fruit. Conquerors, armed color covered his fist, and then he hit Sengoku's shock wave hard. Both Sengoku and Sha Luo used armed color and conqueror's entanglement, and both were advanced applications. Their attacks had a huge impact without any real contact. Black lightning was generated at the point of contact between the two men's attacks, and the storm swept through the ordinary soldiers, who were swept up into the sky by this force. Hey, isn't it? I heard Kazaru mention this before, but I didn't expect this kid to use this power so powerfully in just two years. Aokiji had a look of shock on his face. Sha Luo was stronger than he expected. Although he had already learned about the other party's strength from Kazaru's mouth, the impact was completely different from the impact he witnessed with his own eyes. Aokiji has been paying attention to Sha Luo since he appeared. After all, Sha Luo had hidden away with Robin for two years and only recently appeared on the sea. In the past two years, he has completely lost Robin's information. Two years ago, he was still able to stop the opponent, but now the opponent is not at a disadvantage against Marshal Sengoku. No wonder Kazaru felt like he was falling into deep self-doubt after the battle at Sabayati Archipelago. Anyone would be shocked by this. It took a young boy in his twenties two years to reach the level of strength that they had experienced through numerous battles and training. Boom. 
The golden shock wave was directly knocked away by Sha Luo and landed not far behind him, and a huge explosion sounded. I came here just to declare my power to the world government and you marines. Against the backdrop of the explosion's firelight, Sha Luo's face with a disdainful smile spoke slowly in a plain tone. Click this scene happened to be recorded by the phone in Buddy the Clown's hand, and then spread to the whole world. Countless people were like Buddy the Clown, with their mouths wide open and snot flowing down their noses, looking very shocked. Chapter 159 After Defeating Sengoku and Defeating Garp Oh, I didn't expect it to be this troublesome brat. But he was really underestimated. He actually regarded our marine as a stepping stone. Kazaru scratched his head with a headache. On the one hand, he didn't want to face Sha Luo, but on the other hand, as a marine admiral, he had to fight against such an enemy. Damn you brat, are you declaring war on us marine? Sengoku looked furious. Marine has been established for so long, but no one dares to talk to them like this. To openly declare war on them in front of all marines, this is more than just a provocation. Declaring war. Rather than declaring war on you marine, it's better to declare war on the world government. Declaring war. Not only declaring war with marine. Declaring war with world government. Everyone on the screen was shocked and speechless. All the marines stared at him dumbfounded, and all movements of their hands stopped. The reporter's notebook fell to the ground without even noticing. A long time. Everyone burst into exclamations. A blatant declaration of war on the world government. Another person appears on the sea who dares to challenge the world government so blatantly. I remember the last one was Monkey D. Dragon, the leader of the revolutionary army who was called the most vicious criminal in the world, right? The civilians were surprised at Sha Luo's courage and dared to declare war on Marine. He doesn't have huge power and subordinates like Whitebeard. Apart from the remaining members of Golden Lion's old team, Sha Luo can only be regarded as a loner. But this is the man who dares to challenge the world government. What, 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 that's interesting. I don't need to do anything now. I'm looking for death and provoking the world government. It's not my fault. Doflamingo bloated and smiled. I was still worried about how to let Marine deal with Sha Luo, but now first I'm provoking Marine to death, so there is no need for me to do anything. As long as Sha Luo dies here, he still has a chance to get Dressrosa back. This is really interesting. Whitebeard, Roger's son, and the successor of the Golden Lion all gathered in Marin. Fando, against Marine Marshal and Marine Hero plus three Admiral, this is probably the most massive war in history. Quote. The supernovas of Sabayati Archipelago all showed expressions of interest. This war is getting more and more chaotic, with many forces joining in. There were also some big, unprecedented news. The straw hat kid who was also a supernova turned out to be the son of the leader of the revolutionary army, Long. Ace turned out to be the son of Roger. Sha Luo, the successor of the Golden Lion, also got involved in the war in order to declare war on the world government. Among the younger generation, Sha Luo is the most powerful. Even they couldn't help but feel proud. Everyone wanted to become stronger, imagining that the person standing in that war was themselves. All the supernovas stared intently at Sha Luo's back on the screen. Only Jewelry Bonnie looked at the bear in a corner with tears streaming down her face. Damn you brat, you really think our marine has no one. Sengoku's face could not be darker. If nothing can be done here, marine's morale will suffer an unprecedented blow afterwards. No matter what, Sha Luo and Whitebeard must be kept here. They still need high-end combat power and fighting power. Since Garp can't take action against Ace, let him deal with Luo with him. Summer. Garp. How long are you going to stay there in a daze? Sengoku yelled, waking up Garp who was immersed in pain and anger. Garp gritted his teeth and stood up. Akainu had been defeated by Whitebeard and fell into the ground, not knowing whether he was alive or dead. But the war is not over yet, and I can't continue to be sad here. Garp wiped away the tears from the corners of his eyes, and his expression gradually became firm, as if he was venting his anger on Sha Luo. Garp jumped up, and his fist was covered with extremely thick armament hockey and conqueror's hockey. If this blow hit the naval headquarters, it would be enough to destroy the entire ground. Hero of naval headquarters, Vice Admiral Garp, I have heard of your name for a long time. Single quote. Mr. Shaki has received a lot of care from you and Sengoku. Faced with Garp's domineering attack, Sha Luo was still interested in chatting, and then did the same as before. Haki covered the thick fist with his fist and received Garp's blow from the front. An explosive impact erupted from the fists of the two men. Again, ordinary marines are numb. The blow from Sengoku and Sha Luo just now had already caused them a lot of suffering, let alone their involvement in the battlefield. Even standing firm is a problem, and now Garp is fighting Sha Luo like Sengoku. Marine, who was holding on in front, can no longer hold on. The strong wind blew away all the marines around them. What two people are fooling around? With such a strong power. Aren't you afraid of destroying the entire land? Aokiji said with a headache, and at the same time, he couldn't help but retreat a little. A huge ice wall surrounded Sengoku, Garp and Sha Luo, trying to protect Marine who was swept by the storm as much as possible. But Sha Luo doesn't care about this. 
He is the power user of lion fruit. He can fly even if there is no land. Kuzan Admiral. The marines looked at Kuzan with grateful eyes. If not for Kuzan, they would have been blown away again. Don't be careless, it's not over yet. Kuzan said with a serious face, and the power of ice in his hands continued to flow, maintaining the strength of the ice wall. The impact continued, and the ocean in naval headquarters was churning like it was being shaken by shock fruit. Snort. Garp and Sha Luo snorted at the same time, and the power in their hands continued to increase. The two fists finally came into contact, and they felt each other's powerful power at the same time. Bang. Another powerful impact hit, and even Aokiji's ice wall couldn't hold on and collapsed. Garp and Sha Luo in the air retreated hundreds of meters at the same time. A long ravine formed under their feet. The smoke and dust dispersed, and the two stood face to face, both looking intact. It's terrible. This is just one attack, and naval headquarters is almost overwhelmed. The marine soldiers couldn't help but swallowed and looked at the two of them in horror. Have you blocked it? Sure enough, this brat is also at the top of the sea. Sengoku moved his arms in front of him and said with a serious face. Whitebeard turned around and saw the duel between Sha Luo and Garp. He narrowed his eyes and raised the corners of his mouth slightly. It's really powerful. It's much stronger than that guy Shaki. His body and hockey alone are enough to fight Garp. Marco, give this to Ace. After seeing the situation at Sha Luo's side, Whitebeard called Marco and then moved in with the hernia that Sha Luo gave him. Dad, this is it. Marco quickly took the fairy beans thrown by Whitebeard, looked at them carefully, and then said in surprise. Well, if the bean that kid Sha Luo gave him is as powerful as he said, then Ace can still be saved. Whitebeard said in a deep voice. He didn't dare to guarantee that it would be effective, but now he could only treat a dead horse as a live doctor. Ace's injuries were beyond what doctors could handle. I see. Marco showed a determined look, grabbed the beans, and then quickly flew in the direction of Ace. Hey, doctor, what are you doing? Treat Ace quickly. Luffy shouted loudly while still grabbing Whitebeard's doctor. The Whitebeard pirates don't just have female nurses in the medical class, ordinary men. There are also sexual medic pirates. There is nothing we can do, Ace's internal organs have been completely burned. The medical soldier gritted his teeth and said painfully, with tears already streaming down his face. How is that possible? You quickly think of a way to save Ace. You are a doctor, right? Then think of another way. Luffy still pulled the medic's clothes unreasonably and shouted anxiously. Luffy. Sabo grabbed Luffy with tears streaming down his face. He was not like Luffy who couldn't see the situation. Ace's internal organs were all burned, and even the gods couldn't save him from this situation. Luffy looked back at Sabo doubtfully to see what he looked like. He also realized something and tears couldn't stop flowing from the corners of his eyes. At this time, Marco rushed over in time and pushed the medic and Luffy away. Pineapple head, what are you doing? Let the doctor treat Ace quickly. Luffy sat back on the ground and shouted anxiously to Marco. Shut up. If you still want Ace to survive, don't bother me, Marco shouted angrily. Luffy immediately stopped what he was about to say and looked at Marco expectantly. Captain Marco. Ace has. The medic said slowly with a look of unbearable on his face. Marco ignored him, fed the fairy bean in his hand to Ace's mouth, and then said softly, Ace, stop talking and swallow this bean. It's useless, Marco. I know my situation myself. There's no way I'm going to survive. Ace had a gloomy look on his face, a forced smile on his lips, and looked at Marco. I said it. Stop talking and swallow the beans quickly. Facing Ace's expression as if he wanted to give his last words, Marco shed tears and loudly stopped Ace from saying anything else. Seeing this, Ace could only show a helpless smile and used his last strength to swallow the beans. This made Marco feel relieved. Fortunately, the beans did not leak out directly from the place where he was penetrated, but disappeared after swallowing his throat. Haha, I have eaten well, but just a small bean like this can't feed me enough. Wait, this is. Ace's forced smile suddenly froze, and then he suddenly stood up and looked down at his chest. There used to be a big hole there, which was just penetrated by a kainu's lava. Now it looks intact, and this part of the skin is particularly fair. If you look at it from the back, the original tattoo of the Whitebeard logo is now like a new skin, with a hollow circle on the body. This. What's going on? Ace touched his chest and back randomly. This situation made him very surprised. He was about to die a second ago, but now he miraculously survived, and all his injuries were healed. This can be said to be a miracle. Ace thought about the situation he just had, could it be that Marco gave him the bean to eat? By the way, he recovered after eating the bean, and he felt that he was not hungry at all. Just now he said that this one bean couldn't feed him, but now he feels like he won't be hungry even if he doesn't eat for 10 days. This, this is unscientific. The medic looked frightened and pointed at Ace with a trembling finger. Ace, who looked like he was about to die just now, now looks like a miracle. He came back to life and recovered from all his injuries. This has subverted his worldview. That's great Ace. Luffy rushed forward and hugged Ace happily, and Sabo did the same. It was really difficult for these three brothers. 
They finally got together, and one of them almost died. Seeing this scene, Whitebeard's eyes softened, and then he turned around and abandoned this gentleness, becoming frightening. He walked up slowly and came to the center of the battle with Marine. After Sha Luo punched Garp, the two retreated several hundred meters before stopping. He also noticed the situation on Ace's side, and his expression was a little complicated. Seeing Whitebeard coming over, Sha Luo immediately asked, Good Li Zhao. If you use this beam, it can completely restore your current injuries, and you can live for a while longer. Is this really a good use? Ji Yu La 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 La, Sha Luo, little devil, I have to thank you first for giving me this beam. It is indeed as you said, it has powerful effects. As for recovering my injuries, there is absolutely no need. This is the battlefield chosen by Laozi for the final battle. As you said at the beginning, this is a battlefield that belongs to. At my funeral, it's better to leave more opportunities to young people, Yula La La La. Whitebeard laughed, his eyes showing gratitude. It's up to you, anyway, this thing has been given to you. How you use it is your own business. Sha Luo didn't care about this anymore. It was originally intended to be used by Whitebeard to make him cause more trouble in naval headquarters. Unexpectedly, he left this hope to Ace in the end. But considering Whitebeard's character, it's not difficult to guess that there will be such a result. But Sha Luo, you are really brave. Facing these two guys Sengoku and Garp at the same time, I saw the movement of the punch just now, and the old guy's fist also. It feels bad. Quote. Didn't you keep fighting with Admiral? I watched Akainu's fate. His waist was probably shattered at one point, right? The Lava Kid's physique is also extraordinary. Any attack will seriously injure him. If it weren't for Ace's injury, I would have continued to pursue him. Whitebeard's eyes showed a cautious look. Although Akainu took a hit from him. The shock wave of force lost its ability to move. But if he is given a chance to breathe, he may stand up again. Admirals are not only strong in combat, but their physiques are also extraordinary. Each of them has a monster level physique. Chapter 160 Justice 2 Against 1 What's up kid, do you need my help to withstand Sengoku and Garp's attacks while you go first? Are you kidding me, I'm not so weak that I need an old man to back me up. And since I came down, I never thought about leaving so easily. Tisk, you're such an unlovable brat. Forget it, it's up to you. Anyway, you have that old guy's fruit ability. You can fly away anytime and anywhere, and they can't stop you. Facing the two admirals, Sengoku and Garp from naval headquarters, Whitebeard and Sha Luo were still in the mood to chat and joke around. Sengoku on the opposite side had his brows twitching. The two people's arrogant attitude was really a bit too irritating. At the same time, facing so many elites in our marine, you still look like you were taking a leisurely stroll. I will make you pay the price. Sengoku took off his coat of justice. Garp looked better after seeing Ace alive, and now his target has shifted his full attention to Sha Luo and Whitebeard. The two of them tore off their justice coats just like when they faced the Golden Lion together. But this time he faced his successor Sha Luo. Go to hell. Suddenly, a vice admiral from the branch came behind Sha Luo with a mace and wanted to memorize the Thunder 8 trigrams for Sha Luo. Sha Luo seemed not to notice and didn't even turn around. There is no need for Sha Luo to pay attention to this weak guy. When he hits him, he will know whether it is his mace that is harder or Sha Luo's head that is harder. Wait, don't do anything stupid. Seeing this, Sengoku reminded the midfielder with an anxious look. Bang. To everyone's expectation, the vice admiral was kicked out. Appearing behind Sha Luo was a tall, curvy woman. It was Boa Hancock, the empress known as the most beautiful pirate. Sha Luo turned her head in surprise. Look at Hancock's attractive figure. He didn't understand why she suddenly chose to come over to help him. When Sha Luo's eyes turned to her, the pirate empress looked like a shy little girl. This familiar feeling. Sha Luo's expression changed from surprise to a smile. Hancock looked away shyly and put his hands on his cheeks. She was so shy that she didn't dare to look at Sha Luo. Haha, I haven't even started yet, but I didn't expect that the Empress would have completed her own strategy without even having to worry about what Sha Luo was doing. After the summit war is over, I have to have a good talk with 830, the pirate Empress. Empress Boa Hancock, what are you doing? You're actually attacking Marine. The vice admiral of the branch who was kicked away looked at his petrified and broken mace, as well as half of his body and face that had been petrified. He slowly asked, with a look of shock on his face. You are not qualified to question anything that Igea has done, you despicable and shameless person, because no matter what Igea does, he will be forgiven. Facing the vice admiral's inquiry, Hancock said arrogantly. Whether it was his movements, gestures or words, he showed contempt for him both inside and outside. However, the other party looked like an nymphomaniac, with love in his eyes, and was captured by Hancock. However, Hancock's extremely contemptuous gesture was because he raised his head too high. His eyes directly met Sha Luo's eyes behind her. In an instant she was as shy as a little girl. Your Majesty the Empress, Your Majesty the Empress. The Marine soldiers were all captured by her cute appearance, and couldn't help but call her, and they didn't even fight. I really appreciate the help of this Empress. Sha Luo winked at her frivolously and said in a playful tone. 
Hum, Mr. Sha Luo. Unexpectedly, now Hancock has turned into a fan of his, covering his heart with a flushed face, still panting, just like the performance when he reaches the top of something. Master Sha Luo actually smiled at me and said thank you for my help. Hancock bit his sleeve and said excitedly with a flushed face. She had already imagined a very beautiful Sha Luo in her mind, holding her hand in her arms and saying affectionately, Hancock, thank you. Woo 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 woo, single quote. Hancock shook his head crazily and covered his face in embarrassment. As this destiny, for me to meet Mr. Sha Luo here. People, quote, Hancock pressed his heart and muttered to himself. No one bothered Hancock anymore. Only Sengoku gave her a meaningful look. It's considered saved, but Boa Hancock's behavior is not quite right. It's like he admires that kid. He doesn't like him. Sengoku became alert. Before the fight even started, a high-end combatant from this camp seemed to have defected. Sengoku and Garp stood in front of Sha Luo, while Aokiji and Kazaru stood in front of Whitebeard. Marine had a tacit understanding and gave priority to Sengoku and Garp to deal with Sha Luo, a guy who was a huge threat. Aokiji and Kazaru are going to deal with Whitebeard. Even if they can't beat him, they have to hold it off, and let Sengoku and Garp finish Sha Luo and then come back to help solve the big problem of Whitebeard. Although he has been severely damaged by Akainu's Dark Hound, it is because this state will become more dangerous. When a person is dying, he will burst out with infinite power. Aokiji and Kazaru don't want to end up like Akainu. Haha, <laughs> Garp, Sengoku, two veterans are really looking up to me when they deal with a newcomer like me at the same time. Sha Luo chuckled and said, Although it's a bit embarrassing, facing a young man actually requires both of us to take action at the same time, but we can't care about that now. Sha Luo, your threat is ranked at the top by the world government. The five elders want to deal with you more than Whitebeard, so I won't let you leave here. Sengoku took off his glasses and pinched his eyebrows, although his face became serious. Old man, how long has it been since we fought together like this? I never thought we would have such an opportunity. Garp grinned and slowly rolled up his sleeves. I didn't expect that a young man would actually push the world government and marine to this point, and they need to fight quickly. After saying that, Sengoku and Garp became very energetic. Practical arrogance rose around the two of them. It was a strange state formed by the two conquerors in armed colors. Is it a just two-on-one fight? This is how Mr. Shiki failed when faced with your alliance, but unfortunately, I am not Mr. Shiki, now. I am stronger than him here, and, when Sha Luo was talking, Xiao Yin flew behind Sha Luo at some point. The violent flames are spraying out from the end of its gun wings. This hockey looks so handsome, and there is also the pressure that hits his face when he faces it. Sengoku and Garp's expressions instantly became serious. And, you thought it was two against one, but it was actually two against two. I am not like Mr. Shiki, but I have my own companion. DEXDFL, along with Xiao Yan's roar, Sha Luo slowly finished speaking. Isn't that the dragon that carried Sha Luo before? I didn't expect it to be so strong. It's not easy to handle now. It's not so easy to take down this guy. Sengoku said to Garp with a solemn expression. Ah, I feel it. It's quite a tricky guy. The red thunder and lightning appeared from his wings. I guess it was this dragon that shot the thunder and lightning from the sky before. Garp also said calmly, with no look of contempt in his eyes, but with caution. Haha, Sengoku, you are really living your life more and more. You actually want to fight with a junior, but this kid is not a fool. Sir, you made the wrong calculation this time, Seba, Gulalalala. Whitebeard laughed, but smiled, and he felt a pain in his chest. Then he covered his abdomen, which was penetrated by a kainu, with his hands. There was a big dark hole right there, and there was a burning smell of barbecue all around. Some of the internal organs were half cooked, but Whitebeard relied on his tenacious willpower to survive and was able to exert great strength. You're careless, Whitebeard. Kazaru raised his finger, pouted his obscene mouth, and said slowly. At the same time, a yellow light lit up on his finger, and the laser shot out. Whitebeard noticed the situation on Kazaru's side, and since he sensed the danger, he could only move slightly, and the laser grazed the side of his face. Although it missed Whitebeard, the speed of the laser continued unabated, heading straight towards Sha Luo. Sha Luo directly grabbed the light with her palm covered with armament hockey. Then she squeezed it hard and blasted Kazaru's laser directly in her hand. What, Uncle Kazaru, do you want to switch opponents with these two veterans and come to fight me? Last time, we were interrupted before the fight was over. This time we can have another fun fight. Sha Luo turned to look at Kazaru and said with interest. Oh, it's so scary. You're the type that troubles me the most. I'd better let Mr. Garp and Mr. Sengoku deal with you. I don't want to fight you. Kazaru raised his head and surrendered very spinelessly. What a joke, if he fights Sha Luo again, he would rather fight Whitebeard. It is much easier to bully the elderly than to hit the young, especially the injured elderly. That's such a shame, I still want you to see my newfound power. Sha Luo spread her hands and said helplessly. Before, his speed was slightly slower than Kazaru's, but now with the bonus of Thunderfruit, his speed is not inferior to Kazaru's. If the fight started again, he was very much looking forward to Huang Yuan using his teeth. Stop talking nonsense, Garp, 
I'll hold this dragon, you hold this kid first, wait until Aokiji and Kazaru are dealt with. Whitebeard comes to help, and then he will take down this kid. Sengoku said with quick eyes and hands, and then rushed towards Shaoyan. Garp has no objection to Sengoku's allocation, he is confident enough to keep Sha Luo. He had long heard that Kazaru and Aokiji said that Sha Luo was very powerful, and it was only after they punched him that he had such a clear perception, and he couldn't help but feel itchy. It's been a long time since I met an opponent who can go all out like this. Seeing that Sengoku rushed forward without even changing the shape of the Buddha, Sha Luo raised the corners of her mouth and said softly. I didn't go all out at the beginning, if I underestimate Xiao Yin, I will suffer a lot. Facing Sengoku's charge, Xiao Yin's expression remained unchanged, and then his body transformed into lightning and rushed forward. A man and a dragon collided. Boom! Shockwaves and lightning intertwined. Garp also rushed towards Sha Luo. The two of them collided with each other in a fist to flesh manner. Bang bang bang. Just like Dragon Ball warriors, the two figures kept disappearing and reappearing, leaving only the sonic boom of the two fighting in the deserted air. Amazing. The marine soldier stared at the two men in shock. Why are you dazed here? Hurry up and stop the Whitebeard Pirates leaders from escaping. We must capture Ace, the son of crime. A headquarters vice admiral yelled loudly, these ordinary sailors looked really out of place. Yes, I understand, after receiving the order, the marine soldiers did not stop and rushed towards the broken gap. The marines had already built a bridge over there. The vice admiral of the headquarters looked back at the place where Garp and Sha Luo were fighting, and a trace of cold sweat could not help but form on his forehead. The strength of these two people has far exceeded their naval headquarters vice admiral level, and they cannot participate in a battle of this level. Even though they are called marines most important force, bang. Sengoku transformed into a giant Buddha and punched Shaoyan, who immediately transformed into thunder and lightning to avoid it. At the same time, the gun wings turned into two sharp blades. These wings were like arms and blades, and countless arrogant sword energy was cut out by it. This overwhelming sword attack caused even Sengoku to shed a drop of cold sweat on his forehead. This violent sword attack reminded him of an old friend's move. It is none other than Sha Luo's master, Lion of Golden Lion Shiki, Thousand Slice Valley. Sha Luo should be able to do this trick, but now it's actually a dragon who uses it? This is a bit too outrageous, isn't this a flying dragon transformed by a human after eating the fruit of a phantom beast? Otherwise, why would he even know the swordsmanship of the golden lion? Sengoku could only raise his hand and send out another huge shockwave to disperse all the sword energy. But Xiao Yin's gunwing turned into its original jet state and rushed straight towards Sengoku. Under the acceleration of lightning, Sengoku couldn't dodge at all, and was directly knocked away by the accelerating Xiao Yin. Boom! Marshal Sengoku, the marine shouted worriedly. After the smoke dispersed, Sengoku stood up slowly and looked at Xiaoyan fearfully. The entanglement between Sha Luo and Garp also stopped. Are you okay, Sengoku? Garp asked worriedly as he landed next to Sengoku. It's not a big problem. The strength of this dragon cannot be underestimated. Its strength is probably the best in the world. Sengoku stood up and patted the dust on his body, stared at Xiaoyan fearfully, and said slowly. 